All right. Welcome, everybody, to the latest episode of the Xbox Two podcast. Uh, you know, every single Friday, most of the time, we are here. And uh, yeah, we are... show for a while at this point. You don't have think we? we? I don't know. That's a good. I don't know. I don't know when the last time we missed. Yeah. It might have been one. Well, because I I was grabbing I guests. Was on vacation. Yeah, you were on vacation, but I still did the show because the show must still go did on. The show, yeah, yeah, show must go on. So we pretty, are on like good. episode two eighty eight or something, almost three hundred. Uh, what's going on, everybody? I'm one of the co hosts of the show, Randall Thor nineteen, the man with the million. And with me, as always, we have managing editor, Wendell Central, Jez Corden, who is going on a podcast tour this weekend, apparently. I am indeed. Uh -huh. Podcast tour. Yes. We're doing all the podcasts. I'm doing, I'm doing two this weekend and another two next week, I think, and then another one in November. And yeah, we're trying to, trying to you know, spread, spread the love around. Spread, spread some of the Jez love. They want, they yeah. want that. Uh... That's bad. That 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 <laughs> British humor alongside your knowledge of everything, you know, Blizzard. Because oh, they, they certainly they certainly don't they, they don't it's need you. Humor. They don't need you for your game takes because you don't play any games. You know what I'm saying. What? <laughs> I'm playing a game right now, actually. Oh, what game are you playing? Now? What game? I'm playing Diablo. Thank you very much. Of course, you new are. season. You know, I think new seasons dropped. Wasn't the whole bet that you're not supposed to play Diablo for the whole rest of the year? I thought that was the bet. No, what bet? The bet that ABK would go through. If it did, you couldn't play any uh, Activision Blizzard games for the rest of the Wasn't year. Wasn't it that I had to eat the chip? No, that was the whole. That was just that was the FTC stuff. That was with the just the injunction. Uh, well, the FTC is trying to block it, bro. So it's not over until. The FTC's appeal has failed. So yeah, mm. it's not it's not it's not over yet, bro. It could still get blocked. It no, could still it get actually blocked. it actually can't. But <laughs> well, aren't they aren't they gearing up for another court case? I mean, aren't they? They are gonna waste taxpayer money. Uh, but it's a lot harder now because now essentially they would have to convince a, a judge that uh, to unwind the acquisition, which are which is immensely harder than convincing a judge to get, uh, you know, to block it an acquisition. So now well, you would have strange to... Things have happened, bro. I think, maybe. Has a divestiture ever been forced through via the FTC before? I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure it's there has. It's happened in Britain. Britain forced Meta to sell Giphy. Right. After the fact. But yeah, I I don't know. I mean, I mean, who knows, man? Crazy things could happen. So the the bet's not consummated yet. <laughs> I probably used that in a weird context, but it works. It works. The bet is not been consummated just yet. So mm. hold your horses, baby. You shouldn't be playing. We've still that. got time. We're playing extra time right now. <laughs> shouldn't be playing Diablo, bro. <laughs> you can't play anything. Oh, well. You know. What? Why? Because it was. Because that was. Because it was one of those things where it was like the bet was like, what can I do to really punish you for not believing, right? Well, dude, I, I, fine. If the FTC loses a court case, then <laughs> I won't play the app. It's like, well, it's not only that. No Overwatch, no Diablo, no nothing, bro. Not even not even Warcraft Rumble? No, on not even any. You can't play Warcraft? You can't play anything. That's what was like, that was going the to, the heart, to the heart of the matter, was getting you to stop playing the games that you always play, you know? Oh. Man, you are you're a mean, I mean nasty hey, person. Hey. I would never I would never do something like that to you, bro. You tried to get me to eat a chip, okay. and that would have killed me. I'd have, <laughs> I would have died. Killed you? I would have died. Wow. You you would have you would have seen bro. me literally die like almost Hargeet did <laughs> when we was eating the channel. Oh uh, man. You'd have been like, where did so Ran go? Hargeet, and then man. you never you I would never would have came back and then you'd be like, uh what happened? Oh, he's not man. here anymore. You well, know, yeah, we'll see. Gotta so. give a big shout out to my buddy Tim Dog in the chat. Tim it's always, Dog, it's always oh, good. Wow. Yeah, Tim Dog's in the chat. It's always good to see the one and only seventy-two-year-old Tim Dog. You know, seventy-two. Seventy-two. Wow. Yeah, He's almost as old as you. I mean, thirty years. <laughs> or, or or is he sixty-eight? I, I I don't know. Like yesterday on Twitter, he was very much like, "I'm sixty-eight. I'm sixty-six. I'm sixty-five." <laughs> People were DM and be like, "Dude, did you know? Did you know Tim was in his sixties?" And I'm like, 
I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, he just said on Twitter he's 68. I'm like, dude, my dad's like 69. There's no way Tim's 68. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know? Oh, man. Well, I I often think about like, uh, am I still going to be doing this when I'm when I'm in my 60s and stuff? And I, I I can't imagine not gaming. I'm sure you guys in the chat feel the same way right now. Like, mm-hmm. I remember when I was a kid, man, and I was like 18 playing World of Warcraft. And there'd be like 30 year olds playing World of Warcraft. And I, I was sitting there thinking, man, haven't they got like anything better to do? Don't they have kids or, you know, adult things to do? <laughs> and now I'm the 30, 30 year old dude playing World of Warcraft. Well, there's like Gen Z kids running around saying no cap for real and all that stuff. Yeah, no all, the, all the cool kids speak. <laughs> no cap for real. Uh, uh, on guard. Man, how how the how the tables have turned, how the turns have tabled, how the turns have tabled. So how's uh, how's your week how's been? So it's it's been a week since ABK. You know, you got exactly what you Just wanted. Settled. Your beloved Blizzard is now a part of Xbox. How's your week been? Has it been good? Has it been mediocre? Uh, you've been you've been swamped with work. You've been playing games. Like what's what's up? I've been playing a few games. I've been working. You know, it's I'm still trying to catch up. Dude, I've still, my backlog, my work backlog is ridiculous. I've still got work outstanding from July that I've got to do on my desktop. Okay. Like, I, it's it's pretty bad. I need, like, I need a PA or something. Or like You, you need an assistant. You need a personal I, I need assistant. A, I need, a, yeah, I need a personal assistant or, or, or a clone who can do, who can do, like, some of my work backlog. So I'm trying to get through that now. And now that the ABK deal's sort of over and the dust is settling a bit, there's... It's kind of nice in a way because it's like I can start digging into my, you know, my massive pile of stuff, work that I need to do that I haven't done, um, dating back all the way to July and even further. So it's been a pretty standard week, I guess. There's been some interesting news come down the pipeline, some stuff, secrets that Mm -hmm. I'm aware of. Secrets? Uh, I like secrets. Yeah, secrets. Do I know this secret? No, you don't know this secret. You haven't told me this secret? No, I do not. Wow, I, I have not. Wow, and, uh, so much for our yeah. friendship. Yeah, yeah. Well, you you trying to stop me playing Activision Blizzard games, bro? Well, I mean, bro, but, you, you <clears> told <throat> me that as soon as the deal was going to be done, they were going to drop games in Game Pass, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean about about that. <laughs> yeah, about, about that. that. Uh, about about that. Let's see. Uh, Jazz Jazz, that. Jazz, will, Jazz will say <clears throat> I read the message wrong. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> he doesn't want to talk about it. That's how oh, bad that it what? is. Mm. Oh man, I yeah, gotta give sloppy. you. I gotta give you because in my mind, I, I was thinking of this clip from like, um, it's a Batman show, uh, Harley Quinn or whatever, and it's like the Joker finds out who Batman is, and he's like, "Oh, Batman's Bruce Wayne." He's like, "He's like, where the hell is my damn electric car, Bruce?" And I was thinking, like, I was like, where the hell are my Game Pass games, Jess? <laughs> if you guys, if you ever watch, like, Harley Quinn on HBO Max, you know probably exactly what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, Jess, where, actually, where, where I, are my Activision and Game Pass games, Jess? I haven't seen the show, but I've seen that uh-huh, one You've clip. seen that clip, yeah. <laughs> I've where, seen that clip. Where the, hell's my, where the hell's my damn electric car, Bruce? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I read the information wrong. What can I say? What can I say? Mm-hmm. But anyway, the games will come, and I suppose Phil Phil said next year, right? They'll yeah. start appearing, manifesting. I suppose we're going to talk about that. In did we talk about it last week? I we I'm, I'm kind of like I'm kind of thrown about what we have and haven't talked about because we've done like a bunch of guest shows on Patreon recently. Yes. So there's like there's almost like did we talk about that last week? Oh no, that was on the Patreon show. That so is, it's that kind was there's on like the a bit of. Show. Yeah, so there's a little bit of overlap, but we have, we also have a bit more context on a bunch of stuff, um, you know, as a result of the the ongoing news cycle and all that fun and stuff. Next so year is we'll only two that. years, two months away. Like Tim says, Tim Per Twenty One says in the chat, like when you say next year, it's not that long. You know, sometimes when you say next year and it's like April, you're like, oh man, that's eight months. But yeah. next year is literally going to be here before you know it. Soon enough, it'll be 2024 in a couple months. That's wild. That is wild. That man. is that is. I suppose, wild. like, yeah, we can predict when some of these games might show up, but um, we'll talk about that in a bit. Should we do some housekeeping around? Yeah, let's 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 get through the the housekeeping. Um, we do we have got a, super chats as well. Yeah, I know. We'll we'll get to those. We do have a sponsor for this episode. 
and it is none other than uh, Manscaped. Manscaped. <clears throat> Are we gonna do the deep voice today? Like, well, I, I don't wanna, know. I just wanna, let I, people know I, that you're kind of sick. You don't have, you yes, know, I'm, I'm you just little, have a regular I, cold, I guess. So you might cough here or there, which is unfortunate. But this isn't yes. like the one time where you joined and you were you sounded like you were literally dying, and I was like, dude, we can't do a show with you sounding like this. <laughs> was that when I had COVID? Yeah, dude, that, that, was, that was when that was, that was when you had COVID. I'm so good about that. Like, I didn't catch COVID for three years, and I proper thought, man. Maybe I'm special. Maybe I'm just immune. Maybe scientists want to study my blood and discover that I am I am patient zero or something like that. But no, I was just a recluse. No, you know, you, because that. because you you had to go to Gamescom. You had to hang out with Gaz and John from Xbox Era and Box and Burger and Wandering Dutch and all those guys. And Clobril. wouldn't you know it? Oh, the Clobril. And Clobril, uh, you come back with with a little bug. A little bug. A little bug. Yeah, uh, it, it is what it is, man. But hey, I got it now, so I can join all the cool kids who also got it. But anyways, I do have a little bit of a cold. Blocked nose, a lot of sinuses and slime, and a little cough. So I will try and not cough into the mic and do my best. Or I apologize in advance if that does occur. You know, really quickly, before you do this ad read, I got to call out somebody in chat. I got to call oh. out Joaquin, okay? Joaquin Branch. Because Why I that? made a bet with him. About the ABK thing. Like, he was pressuring me into betting with him. Like, he was like, oh. I got to bet with Jez. I'm going to bet with you. And I'm not necessarily a betting person. I don't really bet. Uh, it's not, I, I, I've been to casinos, but I don't even really, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, do the tables. I don't do the, you know, uh, I, I just don't like spending my money that way, right? So he was pushing me really, really, really hard to bet him because he was like, it's not happening. It's getting blocked and all this shit, right? And I'm like, no, it'll go through. I, I have faith. And I said that like way back when. And he was like, fine. If, 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 if they get Activision Blizzard, I'll buy you any book that you want uh, at least under 50 bucks, right? So lo and behold, Xbox owns Activision Blizzard. So I go to I go Whoa. to I go to Joaquin and I'm like, hey, we have a bet here, right? We have a bet. Where are my books? And I, I I I put them in my Amazon wish list. I'm like, it's under fifty bucks. Granted, it's like the Expanse, first three books in hardcover. But you said you said under fifty. This is under fifty, and it's been a week and I still don't have them. He's welching on the bet, Jazz. You believe this? You believe this shit? Oh man, unbelievable. Well, I, Look what I got to deal with. Yeah, I don't I don't know, man. My bet with him was that I, I, I've got to stream Catherine. Oh, and I lost the bet. You lost you the know bet. Catherine? But you see, I the thing the is, he's not paying good on his, so you don't have to pay good on yours. Oh, damn. You know? Is that, is that how it works? Well, the thing is, the bet it hasn't even ended yet, man. The FCC it's over. might win. No, it's over. Anyways. It's might win, bro. Anyways, it's time for Manscaped. It's time for Manscaped. <clears throat> Let me prepare. Indeed, friends, we are brought to you once again by the illustrious, lovely people at Manscaped. Manscaped! They're... Come on, Jazz, you can do this. I got okay, faith I in you. This. I can do this. We're brought to you today by Manscaped, who has taken a step up from ball o -ween. That's like Halloween, but ball o -ween. You get it, because of testicles. To bring you your fa <laughs> to bring your face the cleanest shave it's ever seen. So this season, no need to toil and trouble. Manscaped's all-new handyman is the best way to get rid of that stubble. It rhymes. It mm -hmm. rhymes. Sure does. Featuring, <laughs> featuring a compact design and next-gen skin-safe technology, the handyman was designed to give you that smooth finish without the mess of a traditional save. I actually have the handyman. It's very good. It's very handy, man. Mm -hmm. Get it? See what I did there? You're, get the right Swedish You're so cringe right now, Jess. <laughs> You're so cringe. <laughs> Oh well. Uh, get the sweetest treat this Halloween by going to manscaped.com and use code XB2 for 20% off plus free shipping. It may be spooky season, but you don't want to scare people away with that scraggly neck beard, Rand. Yeah, that's give true. Them, give them, that's true, yeah. Give them something to look at with Manscaped's handyman. Are you tired of <laughs> are you tired of a bad razor making your neck look like a scary movie? Oh, uh, do you ever save and just like cut your neck to pieces? That doesn't He's happen. Tough. With Manscaped. 
I'm you're gonna say something then. I'm I'm waiting for you to finish this is this is one of your worst ad reads I've ever heard. Well dude, I'm I'm sick, bro. I'm uh-huh. sick, bro. Okay. You should have done the ad read and I should have done the shows. No, no. We keep it anyways. the way it is. Anyways. With the handyman skin safe technology to help reduce nicks and cuts, you can finally feel confident when you are going for that close shave. And for my wolf man with a little more scruff, Manscaped's Beard Hedger Pro Kit has everything you need to tame your mane. This cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 hair cutting lengths all with one guard. So no more drawers full of extra add-ons collecting cobwebs. Get 20% off and free shipping with code XB2 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and code XB2. For a look as sweet as candy, get yourself a handyman from Manscaped. There you go. <laughs> Thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this episode. I'm sorry this was one of Judge's most cringe reads, probably in forever. Yeah, it's, it, you know, well, it's, ha- it's Halloween, man. It's supposed to. It's supposed to be a scary ad read. I've actually like, like, um, I use man. I use Manscaped this morning. I use my. I use my, my, my uh, uh, lawnmower 4.0. They've got a uh-huh. 5.0 now, actually. So the the latest lawnmower is a 5.0, but I got the 4.0, which is awesome in its own right. And uh, I use it to, you know, trim the sides, keep all the, the lengths even and looking nice. You might want to try that yourself sometime, Rand, especially if you're going to go on camera now you've hit 100,000 100, subscribers. Yeah. Because yeah. you did promise that, Rand. We, yeah. We're talking about people reneging people, on a yeah. deal. I, I, the, the, there is none of that yeah, happening. Yeah. Oh, oh, none is that, that is that right? Mm-hmm. Is that is that right? Not isn't it's not what some people are saying in chat, bro. But, some people are saying that. Some people are saying that you said you will go on camera when I you did. hit hundred thousand subs. I said when I get hundred k, we'll go on camera. I didn't say when. <laughs> that could be in fifty years. Devil, the devil's in the it could details. Be in sixty. The devil's so, in the details. So are you saying we? Are you saying we didn't read the small print? Is that exactly? What you're saying? You got to read the whole the whole print. You got to read uh, all the terms and conditions. You like? You, have you seen Futurama? Have you seen that episode with the devil, with the small print? Yes. You like him, bro. You like him, I, bro. I am. Monkey poor shit. It'll 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 most likely happen before the end of the year. Probably, I was thinking of probably doing it sometime in December because, uh, you know that'll be the slow time for the podcast. We can sort of do some Xbox Ultimates to get it all set up before you, you debut it on the big the big show. But yes, it did. It it'll did. happen. Anyways, we have uh, the amazing people at Patreon. Got to give a shout out to Peter B, Saucy Maz, James Wizo, Tricks Are for Trey, The Grandest of Bip, Chris Parnese, Devkra. Hey Blinken, Battered Haddock, Army Army Dude 52C, Ryan Kipple, Foreign Object, Mythic Marty, Makazilla, Randall Thor 19, Silas, Eric Gregory, Elijah Vasquez, James Moore, Fantasticals, Halo is the franchise player, Katriox, Bright Tundra 1, C4N1H4Z, Cheeseburgers, I guess. Can I have cheeseburgers? I, Justin Duell, Frank Mariano, Preview Brokering, Ace T and Madison, Untidy Tim, Grizzly Mofo OG, Governor Grimm, DZ Huffin. Wagerman Achievement, The Scarecrow 121, Darren Tropy, Prof JJJ, Butterball 8, Ghostface Killer, and Wolf King KPZ. So KPZ. thank you guys so much for supporting us. And uh, for the patrons right now, uh, you do have the Mr. Matty Plays Xbox 2 Plus 1, which we did on Tuesday. That's available. Uh, that was a lot of fun Indeed. getting to have Matty on the show. Uh, Ooh, I was talking about a courage, Mike, dude. Yeah, talking about Bethesda, YouTuber. talking about ABK, talking about whatever came up, and the John Linneman Xbox Two Plus One should be available to everybody on Jazz's channel. I got some interesting tidbits from him uh, as that I saw that that got slothed. Man, Sloth was just waiting for that episode to go. I like that people know it's like, all right, it's Patreon exclusive for now. Don't really talk about it or whatever. Or at least don't clip it. You can mention stuff in it. And as soon as it goes live on Jez's channel, slots there being like, here's here's kind of like the big things mentioned. Uh, yeah. So that's available that's for cool. everybody. And uh, yeah. uh, the Mr. Matty Plays episode is also, you can go and slap a notification in there. Uh, it's, I've uploaded it already to the channel. But it's on Patreon if you want to get it early. Yeah. Um, uh, David says, show Spider-Man gameplay. I, I haven't played Spider-Man yet. I It only came out last night. And I have yet to play it. Because sometimes when a game comes out Thursday night, uh, because I just I just don't like starting games super late. I just, I'm weird like this. I don't know if anybody else is like this. If I only, say, would have like an hour or two to play, I don't, actually don't even bother. 
Like, I need a good <laughs> four to five hour session to really even begin. So, like, when a game comes out at 11 p.m., I just kind of look at it and be like, I don't want to only play for two hours. So I just really won't play Thursday. I'll play today, obviously, Friday. I, am I the only one who's sort of like that? Like, I need, like, a good yes. long experience to actually be like, all right. But, well, dude, the, the, I mean, World of Warcraft usually goes live at a stupid o'clock, like midnight or something, the okay. expansions. I just booked a week off, man. And I, I just stay up all night playing it. Stay up till six in the morning. Sleep all day, rock and roll, baby. Mm. But but I suppose it's an online game, which has a sort of competitive component. For a single player game, I don't think I'd do it. Probably not. I've I've all I've always been like this though. Like if I f- say I'm playing and I finish a game, and it's like ten o'clock, it's like all right, I'm done with this game. <laughs> do I start up another game I haven't played yet? And it, and normally if it's that late, it's like no, because I don't want to start something that late and then just stop after a couple hours i don't know maybe i'm weird i see a couple people who are sort of definitely weird but i've been like that for for as long as i can remember it's like if it's if it's too late in the night i don't want to start something just to just to like finish it i don't know i sort of feel like for me i only really get on the game when i can know i i can put in four to five hours so if I can't, I sort of will just do something else. Like I'll read a book or yeah. I'll watch a TV show. So that's what with Spider-Man coming out at 11 PM. I was like, well, it's too late to start yeah. it. I'm just going to, I actually started reading the sunlit man instead and read that. Yeah. F- I read that for a couple hours and then I went to bed. Cause it was like, all right, Xbox two tomorrow. Let's, let's, let's have a blast, you know, get my nice beauty sleep. So I don't oversleep and sleep through the show. Like I did last time. And then, Will you record gameplay footage for Spider Man? Um, because I mean, one could, thing you, one thing people get on Patreon is they can vote on what gameplay we show. I mean, but we, we can obviously put, we can only we can only pull. Well, I've I've tried doing that before, but you always say, "Oh, we don't want PlayStation stuff on the show. Get out of here." Not true. That is true. That is absolutely one hundred percent the truth. Definitely not true. It is not true. Yes, it is. That is not true. Because I, I put Final That's Fantasy true, sixteen on there, and you 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 vetoed me, and you're like, nope. "Dude, we had we literally had Final Fantasy sixteen in the poll, but nobody voted for it." Yeah, and it, will people want to see Spider Man? I don't know. Granted, I, I I won't be playing anything on Xbox until Alan Wake Two the Diablo following week. Like four times instead of they did. Fast. They'd rather they'd rather see Diablo than see Final Fantasy Sixteen. I guess that is true. So I, I I don't know. But the thing is, you don't put the poll up till Wednesday or Thursday. I might be done with Spider Man by that point in time. Which by the time we put up the poll, and if it wins, it's be like, well, mm-hmm. I ain't going back and turning on my PlayStation anymore to capture just footage. Record, just record the footage from the start, bro. Yeah, I, suppose, I, do it. I could. I could suppose I could do that. I suppose I could. I always record the, fir- the first hour of a new game I'm playing and then put it in the OneDrive in case we need it. But uh, I don't know. I mean, you could. Anyway, re- you, you could record an hour of Super Mario Wonder. Uh, I can't actually because I don't have a Switch. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, who would want to play Super Mario Wonder anyways, right? I actually really do want to play it because oh. it looks awesome. You but know, it's I don't, funny. My Switch is my Switch is in England, so. I made a tweet about my weekend plans, about doing Xbox Two and playing Spider Man and reading Sunlit Man, and then of course Special Nick, who last week just busted his way onto the podcast, right? Just yeah, we just, got we just got raided like a just WWE. DM'd me and was like, "I'm coming <laughs> on the show," right? And I'm just like, "Okay." And he come, you know why he decided to come on the show? Because he wanted to read his own super chat. It wasn't like because he wanted to have a discussion with us and Colt about abk or a discussion about how one of the hosts of an xbox podcast is actually just an, a big nintendo youtuber really at heart and he doesn't care about xbox <laughs> no he wanted to like literally come in and be like can i read my oh, super chat man. and it's like dude nick really is this is this you want to bust in on on episode just so anytime i super chat xbox there i could just bust in and just read my own super chat normally about how horrible you are <laughs> you know <laughs> wow poor nick Poor Nick. Anyway. Anyways. What, what, he, where was he, this going? Well, because I was like, I'm playing Spider-Man 2. And he's like, I don't know why you're not playing Super Mario Wonder. And I'm like, Nick, oh, right. I think I played Super Mario Wonder back in 1989 when it was called Super Mario Brothers 3. And oh, that's was, not fair. And then he you was like. an elephant in this one. And then he was like, eat a bag of shit, Rand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, did I hurt you a little bit? Did I? Oh, 
Wow, he's, that's he sounded kind of a little bit offended. He there. he he was upset. But dude, you can be an elephant in this one. I know you could be an elephant. Well, that 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 makes it fresh, right? No. Yes. No. Yeah, I guess. Uh, at least at least he's <laughs> at least he's uh aware of the jokes. <laughs> uh, so let's get into some of these super chats. I'm sure there's uh, some good ones here. We got Flash. Saying, what games would you guys like to see come back now that the ABK deal is closed? I would personally like the Ooh. true crime to come back as a sequel or a remake like 2K did with Mafia 1. Ooh. Do you have any um, anything like super interested that you're... I, I, you know, I think I can answer this for you. It would probably be yeah, Texan, Yeah, un- right? for me. Texan. <clears throat> Are we not including Blizzard games in this? You, no, well, obviously... Yeah, it's an ABK, so Activision Any ABK Blizzard, game? Yes. Well, in that case, overall, I would love to see Hexen come back just because I like those games are very, very dated. And I just I just can imagine how gothic and badass they would be with modern id stuff. Um but the guy the franchise I want to see come back more than anything in the world, and the one that's at, at least realistic is StarCraft. You know. Right. I mean, there's yeah, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of games but, I'd like to see. No, come I didn't. Back, but I didn't not say realistic. StarCraft because <clears throat> because I'm because you're pretty sure StarCraft is already being worked on and it's already being brought back. I am. Yeah. I'm. I'm like seventy five percent sure. Oh, moment. we're seventy five twenty five now. Yeah. I'm. I'm just sort of. I'm still trying to lock down hard details about what it actually is. Like, I don't want. I don't want to put out there that StarCraft three is coming back. I mean, and Tom Henderson already being... did, and he sourced you. Yeah, I know. So but I was I was drunk at the time. Yeah, that's not an and, excuse. You do leak stuff when you're drunk. Yes, but I shouldn't have put it out there because I don't know. It might be a mobile game for all I know, oh, and I don't want to imagine. Whew. I mean, yeah, it could be a mobile game. I don't think it will be because I'm I pretty sure Blizzard's learned its lesson after Diablo Mall when they announced Diablo Mall instead of Diablo Four. It it kind of they're still reeling from that meme of. Don't you guys have phones? Yeah. So I'm pretty I'm pretty sure they won't do that again. But then again, you don't know for sure. And I don't want to be I don't want to be on the 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 wrong side of, you know, claiming it's coming back and then it's a mobile game. So I'm just going to say wait and see on that one. But yeah, StarCraft. I want to see StarCraft come back. I'm terrible at StarCraft online competitive RTS. I'm just really bad at it. But these are RTSs that are just they're so fun to play offline. Single player, great campaigns. That's what Blizzard was always really good at. Warcraft 3 as well. I'd love to see a Warcraft 4 for that matter. But <clears throat> yeah, StarCraft. There's so much they can do with that universe. Make a shooter, spin-offs, RTS, 4X strategy, lore of the universe is really, really cool. All that sort of stuff. And also, I've been getting into um I've been getting into Warhammer 40k recently, Rand. A little bit. Mm-hmm. Because of Dark Tide. But I kind of feel like Warhammer 40k is so deep and so vast that maybe I should just stick with StarCraft instead. <laughs> it's a little bit easy to swallow. Yeah, there's there's a lot of Warhammer lore. So yours would be yours would StarCraft. be StarCraft. I guess if I had to pick one, see, there's a lot of things I could choose here. I guess it really depends on mm. negotiations and licenses because I could be like, hey. How about a Deadpool 2? Because Activision did Deadpool 1. Like, people always talk about... One of the things Microsoft and Xbox need to do is is to compete against Spider-Man and Wolverine on the PlayStation side, right? And, in fact, even in in the court documents, one of the reasons they decided to make Indiana Jones exclusive from Machine Games was to sort of compete against it. They needed that sort of license IP to go... And, and I don't think Indiana Jones is anywhere near the level of Spider-Man. Nothing really is, right? Spider-Man, like, when you look at the most popular superheroes, he's, like, by far and away number one. And, like, the next closest would be Batman. So Indiana Jones, while it's a license IP and has some recognizable, uh, you know, name value, it's nowhere close to that. So, you know, we know that Activision did have like the Marvel IP at certain points. They did Ultimate Alliance games, one and two. They've done Deadpool. 
Uh, so like you could be like, man, wouldn't it be cool if Activision got the license for that again? We know there's a Deadpool video game or a Deadpool movie coming at some point. Like, what if you were able to do a Deadpool game and not and not only get Ryan Reynolds to voice uh, Deadpool, but get Hugh Jackman to voice Wolverine? Right? Have like, wouldn't that be really, really, really cool? I, I don't that think it's ever going to happen, but I'm just saying, like, probably not. <laughs> Deadpool did come from Activision. Uh, but then I look at some of um, some of their older properties, and I think someone even mentioned it in below, like True Crime, you know, that like kind of uh, yeah. Grand Theft Auto ish game. But you know what I would want if I like as much as I would say, hey, license out the superheroes and get some of that because I do feel that is needed in Game Pass. I mean, I saw Gotham Knights is on Xbox Game Pass, and it looked like it did pretty well, it, like hit top ten. And most played games on Xbox. So, and even though Gotham Knights was a poorly reviewed game, I played it back when it came out, and I actually really enjoyed it. I mean, it's nowhere near on the levels of the ba- Batman games, but it was it was enjoyable. Like it, ha- it still has that <clears throat> recognition factor. Like, oh, here's here's the Batman sidekicks that when you're scrolling Game Pass, you might be like, okay, I'm interested in checking this out. And it, and it went up pretty high, like number 10. Like, you got to be a, a game with a lot of staying power to be kind of situated in that top 10. So I do think it's worth it for Xbox to peruse and maybe kind of see if they could get some... I'm not saying it has to be Marvel. There's always DC. But I, I, I think it's worth it just for that brand recognition because it does hit all the demographics. But there's like one game on my mind that I really liked, and that's Singularity. And I, I think they could do a sequel. So for me, I'm going to say Singularity. Bring it back, do a back and patch drop, and then do a sequel. Uh, that is something I would love. So Yeah, Singularity was so good. So yeah. damn good. Uh, we have one, uh, one W-U-N, <clears throat> Sibic, saying, Do you think Microsoft would get Night Dive as a support studio to handle refreshing old titles even if they had to get Atari in the bundle? Uh, you're talking about straight up buying them. Uh, I don't know if they would want to do that. They seem like they have a good relationship, or at least they had a good relationship with Bethesda because they've done Quake One and Quake Two, correct? Uh, the ports yes. for those. And, yes, yes, yes. They were involved in some capacity. You know, with Phil saying, with Phil directly <clears throat> mentioning Hexen and then saying, "Hey, no, there's no games in development." I saw, I think, the owner of Night Dive went on tri- on Twitter and basically applied for the job of bringing back Hexen or and Heretic, being like, "Hey, we love these games and we got the skills." So I could certainly see, uh, you know, if if negotiations are right, if they wanted to do it, that give those games to Night Dive to not necessarily make a brand new Hexen, but to essentially that has to be it, man. That yeah, it. it would have to be somebody else, but to essentially make. Uh, remaster Hexen for, you know, a modern audience. Not, you know, like they did Quake 1 and Quake 2. I could see that happening. Uh, yeah, Silas, sure. newest member of the channel. Appreciate you, man. I always love when you, uh, you tweet something and he always replies mentioning me somehow every single every single day on Twitter. It's kind of funny. Uh, James Wiseau says, Firstly, got a shout out Insomniac. Looks like they released another great game and cementing themselves as one of the best. Second, got a shout out you two. How are you both this fine Friday? I'm I'm doing great. Love doing the show with Jazz. Love being here with the Xbox Two community. Love talking about this stuff. So, I mean, Fridays are amazing. Plus, tonight, later, I'm going to play some Spider-Man 2 for the first time. And I got Sunlit Man, which is uh, Brandon Sanderson's newest newest Cosmere novel. So, I'm all good, man. I, I'm, I'm ready. I, I'm happy. I'm lit. I don't know. What, I know Jazz is a little down in the dumps because he's sick. Plus, he's all he, you know, it is. You all know, right. Jez is like ABK's <clears> finished <throat> and they own it, and he's still like being negative. He's still like it could still get blocked. It's it can't get blocked. It's done and over with. They could try to unwind it, but it would take literal years, and that's not going to happen. So Jez can't even be happy because he's always kind of try the whole. Oh, well, it could still not happen. It's like Jez, <laughs> live a little, bro. Celebrate a, a tad. I refuse. No, I refuse you need to. to. You need to. Because some yeah, people bro. don't believe that this is all that it was all an act. Some people truly felt that you well, did not. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. It's a hundred percent an act. It's totally not an act. It's legit. It's real, bro. No, it's a hundred percent. It's an real, act. bro. 
100 real bro the earth is flat too okay yeah sure uh <laughs> jp wendango says what if xbox bought friday or was that uh fnaf which is friday night at freddy's is that friday night at freddy's i don't know yes. i've never played them i know they're big with the kiddos with with probably the gen zers it's like a, it's... i've never played it either but i'm i'm moderately curious about it is it is it like what is it is it like an isometrical no multiplayer horror game i think someone in chat needs to explain it i think you're just like using cameras or something to i have no clue i i really haven't watched any gameplay of those games there's a lot of them yeah, i know a lot need of to tell us in chat what friday nights for freddy's actually plays like because i have no clue there's a lot of those games but yeah <clears> i don't really know either uh shout out to dick dastardly becoming the newest member of the channel appreciate you enjoy the emotes we have the andrew 13 saying with persona 5 leaving xbox game pass he's losing that bet too i mean i always he we always knew everybody here watching knew that jez was never going to finish persona 5 i will i will finish bro, persona you, 5. you got less you got two months bro you easy you, plenty of time Plenty of time, and in, in you're you're busy playing B- Battlefield Five or Battlefield 2042, playing all these other games. You could be playing Persona right now. You got four, you got, you basically got four hours Dude. every Friday to play Persona on the podcast. I can't. You can't play Persona while podcasting because it's it's ninety percent reading subtitles. Put subtitles up, bro. <clears throat> I can't read and talk at the same time. I mm. can I can podcast and mindlessly kill mindlessly kill or mindless, zombies mindlessly get hours. killed mindlessly get killed well, yeah, actually we, we know you're killed, killed to death on overwatch and those other games is pretty bad when you podcast uh overwatch is not about kill death ratio bro it's about how you support the team mm-hmm. come on man <laughs> yeah but i do think jez owns persona 5 so you I know I, I could extend the deal i could be like listen how about we make it to the end of 2024? You have until the end no, of 2024. No, no, no. I am going to complete it this year. <laughs> I will. <laughs> you can laugh. You can laugh. <laughs> oh, well, well, what if I complete it, what do I get? Ooh. What, what If I complete it, what? Oh, you, you think I won't do it. If I complete it, what do I get? Uh, no, because I'm, gi- I'm not giving you any incentive to do it because I could say something like I'd give you... I don't know, a hundred bucks and you would probably make sure to finish it. So I'm no, this, the whole thing about this was, nah, not you, money. you would have, yeah, you, can do, you, would have you, you have to play. No, uh, no, 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 no. The, the <laughs> thing about this was there was no incentive for you to do it because you said you were playing it. And I said, you're not going to finish it. And you're like, I will. I'm not giving you an extra incentive for, because if I said, listen, if you finish it, I'll play some garbage Pokemon game. I okay, could actually I see finish you it. finishing it just so you could enjoy the misery that I would be <laughs> under. So I'm not yeah. going to give you that incentive. Yeah. It's strictly about you finishing a game because the whole joke is that I unless it's for a review, Jez doesn't finish games, which is p- totally fine. Which is because it's like kind of the odd couple. Rand only finishes <clears throat> games and Jez never does, so it works perfectly. Right? We're we're synergized. Games all the time, bro. Well, the problem is I play games that you can't finish. How do you finish Diablo? I'm, I'm, exactly? I'm not saying you need to finish Explain Diablo. Me, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm just saying, you, you know, people How have do you noticed. finish World of Warcraft? I've been playing that shit for 20 years almost. Uh-huh. How do you finish World of Warcraft? You don't. I'm not saying you need to. So I'm not giving you any incentive okay, to do okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. Fine, 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 fine. fine. Uh-huh. We have so RDX. many games that you want to finish. RDX on a FET. Portal, Slim PS5 are real. So the Pro is most likely real too. Does Xbox make a Pro? Do they ride it out till 2028 with just the Slim Series consoles? And if so, do they take a different strategy next gen? Well, you know, if we take That's Tom Henderson's reporting as 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 you know accurate, which it has been up to now, so I believe him. He's got he's got some damn good sources at PlayStation. Yeah, I expect the PlayStation does. 5 Pro to be a real thing that is scheduled to come out next year. <clears throat> Um, maybe it gets delayed to early 2025 or something, but I do believe it exists. And I mean, Phil's been out there pretty outspoken about not wanting to do or not needing to do a mid-gen refresh. And we've seen the Xbox leak documents that point to them not doing one. Even in like their whole like pyramid 
where it was things that are funded. It was strictly just the refresh consoles, the new controller, and, you know, looking into stuff for next gen. There was no mention of mid gen. Now, I guess you could always say, <laughs> hey, plans could change. And that is very true. Those documents were from last year. Maybe they suddenly decided they need to do a mid gen refresh and work started uh, end of 2022 or maybe even right now and they could get it done in a couple years. I don't know, but I would willing to bet that they probably are not because, you know, Phil mentioned that and we talked about this with John Linneman. We asked him sort of if like the consoles are living up to their promises and he kind of mentioned that basically what you're seeing now is game development takes so long and it, it, there's a lot of moving parts and everything and, and stuff just, uh, you know, he, he does think the consoles are doing as, as well as they can. But we also know just from how Sony's pricing their stuff currently with raising the price of the digital PS5 Slim, that if you're releasing a PS5 Pro next year, I seriously doubt it comes in at 499 So... If, yeah, I wouldn't have thought so. Yeah, which means it's probably coming in at five ninety nine, maybe even more, maybe even like six forty nine. And at wow. that price point, I could, I could, I could see. Here's, here's what I think. It'll sell. Well, for, it'll sell, man. Well, I don't. It'll sell, you know, but I don't think it'll sell that much. Cause it'll the, sell to enthusiasts. Well, of course, of course, it'll sell the enthusiasts, but you know, and that's pretty much all that's left, really. But the thing is, I bet you they they prototyped a, 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 an Xbox Series X2 or a mid-gen refresh, and it was like, here's what we can get out of it. Here's what will be available in 2024, 2025. But then here's how much we are going to have to sell this for. And here's either, one, how much this console is going to cost, and two, how much we're going to lose money on. And we've already sort of seen Microsoft shy away from... Like last year, when the Series X was nowhere to be found at retail, they were just decided they'd rather put them into the cloud for whatever reason. Um, that Microsoft that went well. Was, what? That went well. That went well. That was, that was that was very good strategy on that one. That yeah. Hey, you make some bets, and sometimes they pay off, and sometimes they don't. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. So they probably looked at it and was like, "Man, can we make a system?" Because for whatever reason, Microsoft systems end up being more expensive for them to produce than PlayStation. So Microsoft ends up losing money longer on these systems than PlayStation does. Like PlayStation will lose in the beginning, but then really quickly they seem to be able to at least get to, okay, we're selling this at cost. And then, oh, we're making a little bit of profit. For whatever reason, Xbox is like, oh, we're losing $100 on this. So I bet you they looked at it. It's volume, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Sony can cut better deals because of volume, I yeah. suppose. So at that point, Microsoft probably was like, "We have to sell this for six hundred, and we're still going to lose fifty to one hundred bucks on it." They probably were like, "No, let's not do it this time." I, I would imagine it comes down to pricing, uh, because even still, like a PS5 Pro for six hundred, I mean, you're getting to that territory of PS3. Where Kaz Harai said five ninety nine and almost torpedoed the entire PlayStation brand, right? Granted, that's not the base console like the PS five is currently, but still, six hundred dollars is a lot of money to swallow, especially for a console that might only you'd only use for a couple years until the PlayStation six came out. You know, I and keep wondering as as, as things as things just change now. You know, I like uh, the average age of a console enthusiast. Are they not just got better purchasing power now? Because kids, kids don't care about console anymore. Like kids don't play consoles really. They play on iPad and That's shit. That's not like true. That. Ten million people downloaded uh, Roblox on PlayStation Five. I mean, who do you think? Who the ten million kids, bro? That, adults, bro. It's adults. Ain't no, no, ain't no adults playing that game. I'm just saying. What are you talking about? They they said they're gonna do a Ro- Roblox dating. Did you not see that? Announcement? I mean, sure. It's all it's all adults, bro. So of course it's adults. Well, <clears throat> ten million kids is small, small, small percentage of the overall footprint of gamers, bro. Sure. It's sad, sad to say, but I do wonder if like. But that's you know, but that that would be one in four of PlayStation's audience if they're at forty million, like ten million. And the thing is, it's it's mostly like 
it's the kids it's the kids of parents who console game probably more than likely well yeah i'm sure it's like oh i bought the console for the family and this is you know my my son wants to play roblox but yeah i i don't know i just i just think like there's probably a universe where the 600 hundred dollar console is just fine now maybe I mean, you are selling to the same people you've been selling consoles to for generations. It's always the same 250 same million people. That's the, what I'm saying, bro. The question is, are can people, you... People buy I, I, iPhones like it's nothing. Yeah, but... As long as there's finance. But phones finance are needed, though. Shit. A lot of people... Like, phones are needed for your daily life. Uh, an Xbox Series X mid-gen refresh is not needed for your daily life. No. So people are like a thousand dollars. I was thinking of it more in the context of the next generation, really. Oh, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, though. If you had to buy your phone outright for a thousand dollars every single time, I bet you people wouldn't upgrade. I think it's because you can get those on a plan and say, I'm paying a hundred dollars a month and I get this brand new phone. I think that has a lot to do with it because if you were paying outright for that phone, people would balk. People would like, no, I don't need I don't need to spend a thousand dollars on this. Well, that's why Xbox was pushing plans as an option weren't they yeah suppose. how did that turn out i don't know i'm they still do it i don't know how popular it is yeah but yeah i i don't know everything's in flux we don't know really where it's all going but i am intrigued about how sony's going to price that pro and how xbox will respond to it i think xbox might just be like we can wait it out because you know people are they really going to max out and use all the overheads outside of first party, you know? You know, because Call of Duty obviously won't be, you know, utilizing every little bit of power in the PS5 Pro, right? Because they're just going to make it for the PS5 base, the Xbox Series X, and leave it at that. Same with, like, Diablo and stuff like that. Like, all the games that Microsoft now controls, they probably won't get PS5 Pro versions, right? I wouldn't have thought. Maybe. I don't know because the deal the deal probably only covers the base PS5, and like Microsoft wouldn't want to you know make their own system look bad. Maybe Microsoft doesn't give a shit about console, <laughs> and maybe they're just like, yeah, we'll we'll make a PS5 Pro version. We don't, we we want it to look as good as it can possibly look, you know. And I wouldn't be surprised if they did that either. But Microsoft might just be like, we can wait out the gen, no big deal. And the people that the I'm I'm wondering if Microsoft just thinks the the install base we've got now is just our install base forever now. It, it won't grow. So we're just pretty much just making consoles for all the people who are digitally locked in. Because like I said on previous shows, like I've got over a thousand Xbox games digitally on this ecosystem. So there's pretty much nothing Sony could do to make me switch my main console. I could get a PlayStation as a companion console for exclusive. I mean, that's what I'm I, never gonna. That's what, yeah, I that's I what you before. do, yeah. and that's where that's what probably most people who listen to the show do. You know, like, but Microsoft's probably thinking like, well, there's way more PlayStation gamers who think that way about their PlayStation. They'll probably get maybe that maybe they can sell them an Xbox for for like really good exclusives. But Sony's putting out so many exclusives. Maybe they don't, you know, everyone's got crazy backlogs as it is. Maybe they don't even need to. Are they so maybe part- Microsoft's just like, maybe Microsoft's just like, we can't get any more gamers now. So we don't even need a mid gen upgrade. So I don't know. I mean, that also kind of, kind of flies in the face of what happened with uh, Starfield and last month and the MPDs, right? Yeah, indeed. So I mean, that, is, that would be the counter argument to my devil's advocate. Right? Yeah, it's like, you put out a game like that, people are going to buy it, and it was proven once again. Although, we'll have to have more of a discussion about that, because there is some finer details around that when we get to it. But, yeah, interesting. Uh, Killer ZA says, the super strict SBMM and forced crossplay in Halo Infinite social playlist makes the game unplayable for me since launch, and Microsoft does not step in. I think that's like the matchmaking stuff, and I always see my friends Yo, complain about skill-based matchmaking. Yeah. Skill-based matchmaking, yeah. I... I'm not I'm not sure about this argument and this debate too much. Um I some people I was compl- some people noticed I was complaining about Halo Infinite on on Twitter today cuz Mint Blitz who's a, a Halo pro player, he posts these incredible sniping montages that are just like they are just dauntingly good. Mm-hmm. Like you just go like yeah, it's just it's just a casual Kilimanjaro, no big deal, you know. 
just, just making it look so fun and so easy. And then like when I go in and play for myself, I just get absolutely completely destroyed. Yeah, because but I'm you, not used to high low. But your skill based matchmaking is not going to be high though. You're not getting screwed by that. It's if you play. Well, with... that's what I'm. Well, well, that's the thing. Lots of people in the chat were saying like, "Oh yeah, this is because of skill based matchmaking," and I was like, "Is it though? I don't really know how it works." So, can can you? I I don't really know. I know how, I know what it is, and I know what it does, but I don't I don't get the criticism of it. So, can you regale us? I don't really. I mean, I don't know really know the criticism of it either. I think it's pretty much. It, it it take it like factors in how good you are at the game and then puts you with people that are similar skill. Well, my my the reason why I'm confused is because my gut instinct would be isn't that a good thing? Well, here's the th- because- so here's so the the thing is it he it's it's a social playlist like there's ranked and there's social but it uses SBMM across both and the problem I had with Halo Infinite which is the reason I don't play it is my friends I've lost a step in my old age I'm not as good at Twitch shooters anymore like I used to be like I used to be really damn good in Halo 2 but oh, Halo Infinite nice. I'm not good so when I play with my buddies like Mr Black Magic and Maka they are you significantly get better right so like they're onyx level uh, stuff okay. and if we play in social the people that it'll grab are essentially you know like social is just supposed to be to screw around and have fun but it'll still like grab people that are sort of similar to their to your to your rank so then i'll be playing with them and then i'll just get wrecked i'll have like two kills and like 25 deaths right like like because it's like supposed to be hey you want to sweat it out go to ranked is social is just supposed to be for fun but sometimes because of the s sbmmm it makes it just as sweaty as the rank stuff so that's why i stopped playing halo infinite because it was just like i this isn't fun to play yeah yeah, i get you i get you say i yeah i my issue is that i'm just bad at the game (laughs) yes i mean you know it's I play, but like going in by myself, I get completely smashed by everyone. And I think just, I'm just not used to Halo or the the play style. You know, I I don't think tactically. I just run in and die. I try and play it like it's you know, Call of Duty or Overwatch or something that I'm more used to. Like, and yeah, I think like the whole skill based matchmaking thing and the way that I don't know, it sort of get shooters have evolved over the years and people treat them. People get so sweaty with it now and take it super seriously because they want to be like, bro, like they're, they're, they're Twitch streaming heroes and stuff like that. Nothing wrong with that. But it's just like, I just can't keep up with that. Which is kind of like why I like games like Battlefield because it doesn't matter when there's like a million people on screen. <laughs> you can always get a kill. and uh, Or Overwatch, which is more, you know, almost MOBA-ish in its gameplay. But yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I don't know what the answer is to um, to solving the debate. I've gotten DMs that people are like, hey, now that Microsoft owns Activision, they're going to step in and do something about CODs SBMM? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue. Yeah, I got a DM about that today. Maybe it was the same guy. But it's it's kind of like, well, dude, if, if, they, if they have it in Halo, why do you think they're going to change it in Call of Duty? The chances are they're probably not. Yeah. And I suppose it, it is... I suppose it is... It is a it is an issue, I suppose. I remember it being an issue when I played Heroes of the Storm with friends and stuff, because um, you know, you'd end up with um, you know, in in situations the same way because Heroes of the Storm are skill based matchmaking and stuff, and and uh, and then you get Smurf accounts where there's you know super pro people have rolled a new account so they can you know get around the skill based matchmaking and play with complete noobs at rank 1 or whatever but uh yeah i don't know they should just they should just add playlists that are just like however it was back in the day cuz it was fine back in the day i never felt like you know it really needed that much of a tweak or something i don't know it's uh- an interesting debate anyway we have a uh, William who says, "Is Microsoft happy with the Starfield numbers, and will they be encouraged to leverage Bethesda into a lesser degree ABK for further ecosystem exclusives?" Um. Well, let's mm. see. I think I think they're happy with it. I, I I think they're I think they're very happy with what it does. As for 
you know, will they let? I mean, we know they're leveraging Bethesda for exclusives. I mean, we've we we've seen Phil's comments about you know like Elder Scrolls Six being exclusive and stuff. Uh, you know, and he even said during the round table, "Hey, like these games will live where Game Pass exists, right?" So we know like Bethesda was an exclusive buy. ABK is a little bit different because it fills a lot of the business needs essentially. Where Call of Duty is going to be a ten year, at least at least ten years multi platform. I think multi platform forever. But even still, they're not going to leverage Call of Duty, or as Phil said, I think weaponize Call of Duty to weaponize, sell Xbox yeah, Call of Duty to, to sell Xbox consoles. <clears throat> right? They're not going to have exclusive skins. They're not going to have exclusive betas, stuff like that. That Sony. And, you know, Microsoft previously during the 360 Gen when they had ex- one-month exclusivity to DLC maps, it was like, hey, if you're a Call of Duty player, you need this is you need to play it on PlayStation because you get these perks. Or if you Xbox player on the 360 and you want to play everything brand new first, you get it here. So you have to buy the console. So we know at least Microsoft isn't going to leverage Call of Duty for further ecosystem exclusives. As for other games... Right, like Odyssey from Blizzard, the survival game. Who knows? You know, j- mm. that game could be announced this fall. They don't. I mean, that game could be exclusive to Xbox. I don't know, but maybe they've been planning the whole time about being multi-platform, and may- maybe it will be. But if if Xbox does something like a Spyro Four, or you know, if they let Infinity Ward make another game. Will those be exclusive to Xbox and Game Pass and stuff, or will those also be everywhere? It's kind of this there's weird. Of s- there's this weird scenario because you know that the games have to be on Ubisoft <laughs> streaming service, right? Yeah, but we don't know where Ubisoft's actually going to license their service to. So, I mean, they've even said at the beginning that there this this is going to have give exclusives because, like, if Spyro Four comes out or a new Crash, I don't think those need to be on PlayStation. So, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like, okay, we'll use those as exclusives. Something like Odyssey, but even still, like something like Odyssey could be super huge. Just like, just like Starfield was, what that could actually push Game Pass and push consoles. So it's just something you would need to figure out. I don't know. I, I'm of the opinion until something else is kind of comes out and, and they say differently that it's really just going to be COD is what's going to be okay, this is everywhere. Because that's the only one they've sort of mentioned that will be everywhere. When they talk about other games, they, it, the other games don't get that same sort of lip service. You know what I mean? Mm. Or at least they're not they're not like coming out and saying, oh yeah, like Diablo, you know, Diablo 5 is going to be, you know, you know. Because like by the time Diablo 5 comes out, Jez, right? Which would, like, let's say, what was the, what was the, what was the, the time difference between f- three and four it was 10 years right it was yeah it was about 10 years yeah. now if we say the time difference is the same from four to five that would be 2033 we know that microsoft <laughs> i'll be old well i'm just saying we know I'll that microsoft old. i know you'll be old Sorry. i'm just saying we know that That's microsoft's weird. plans are to be number one in the industry by 2030 right from their oh. internal documents like they plan to have 38 billion dollars in revenue they plan to have 100 million game pass subs they plan to be leading the industry so if diablo 5 is coming out in 2033 and let's just say microsoft's projections become true and microsoft is leading the industry well you don't need to put the game on playstation for that game's business model to be to work because xbox is now number one you know what i'm saying yes so will that happen well, I mean, yeah, that's obviously projections, and will that happen as, as another thing? And we won't know until Jez is 50 years old, but... Jeez. You know? Yeah, we don't know, like, with regards to which games will go where. It's going to be this weird sort of limbo where we don't know until they tell us at the end of the day. It'll be interesting. Because it, I, it's going to be a case-by-case basis, isn't it? I think Odyssey will tell us a lot. And Odyssey will tell us a lot. Odyssey will tell us a lot of what their thinking is, and maybe like if there's a Spyro or a new Crash or something, uh, and what 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 the plans are for that. And then we, if Odyssey, if they announce Odyssey and it's Xbox only, then you can pretty much be like, all right, 
you can pretty much say anything besides Call of Duty is exclusive, right? <clears throat> Even if they were doing like a Deadpool 2 or like a Marvel game, they'd make that shit exclusive. But if mm. like Odyssey is multi-platform, then you'd be like, all right, well, maybe that's just because it's Blizzard. And then you'd have to see like, okay, what's the next game and, and how does that work? Then again, like, based on what I know, I, I believe, I believe Odyssey will be revealed at BlizzCon right. in early November. So that's like, what, three, two, three I mean, weeks, something like weeks, that? That's a couple weeks, essentially. Yeah. So I believe that's going to happen. And presumably, alongside that, they'll announce platforms, right? Not necessarily. So, they don't need to announce platforms. They can just say console and PC. They don't necessarily need... I mean, Starfield didn't have... I think that was also one of the ways Xbox got around. Not Well, they still piss people off with Starfield, but when Bethesda announced Starfield, it was just announced for next-gen consoles and PC. Mm-hmm. It was never announced for PlayStation and Xbox. So that's kind of one of the ways where it was like they got... They could get away with making an exclusive because it was never a promise for the PlayStation 5, right? Right. I guess. I mean, I suppose we'll see. But, like, my point my point was going to be that presumably if we are pretty... I mean, I've seen Odyssey gameplay. Oh, you know, okay. I've seen Odyssey... Tell, tell us about it. Talk, tell us about it. I talked about it before. I know you sure. have. I know you have. Yeah, I've seen Odyssey gameplay, like pre-alpha, very, very pre-alpha Odyssey gameplay, and you know, it kind of looked like fairy tale, you know, Conan Exiles or Fallout seventy six or Grounded, you know, build, build stuff, hang out with friends, go and kill stuff, uh, in a sort of fairy tale Pixar fantasy land, you know, looked really, really cool uh, with um, you know, uh, first person combat and stuff like that. So. <clears throat> The fact that it's sort of, I got the impression that it was playable, you know. Right. Now I've been in Blizzard. I've been in Blizzard Alpha Test before, uh, Friends and Family Alpha Tests. I was in the uh, Burning Crusade Friends and Family Alpha Test a long time ago, and then I think I was in Cataclysm as well. And yeah, this was a long, long time ago. Development was very, very different. But you know, it it looked like a lot of stuff was implemented. You know, and it looked, you know, it's not it's not something that I would have presentable from a marketing context but it looked to me like they had a lot of they could build a vertical slice to show the game off fairly soon so that's why like i reckon it's gonna be i think i saw the gameplay was it last year i think i have no concept of time anymore but my point was gonna be presumably they've got a lot of ps5 code already down doesn't matter i would have thought doesn't matter so you think you think that they would scrap the PS5 yeah, 100%, version? Hundred percent, hundred percent. If they felt okay. it, if I mean, if they decide it was ex- if if Phil came in and said no, it's exclusive. It it doesn't matter that like oh we have PS5 code. No, now you don't. Well, it's, it's, what it's what does gone. that do? What does that do like for internal optics? Well, I mean, I like don't know. Ima- imagine imagine you're Blizzard, right? Imagine you're Blizzard, and and imagine you are. Say you're in your your team that's in charge of the PlayStation version, and then some random asshole from from Microsoft comes in and says, "Okay, uh, all your work is now scrapped a month before the game gets announced." I don't think that's the kind of optics Microsoft wants to drop on ABK. I mean, they personally. did they they did it on Bethesda. Hmm. I mean, you, you I look know, at man. the Bethesda leaks. Redfall was scheduled for Redfall. Yeah, but that's that's a Redfall, man. I mean, it doesn't Redfall matter. They they already time, did bro. that. It was already done. Like Redfall was scheduled to come to PlayStation platforms, and mm. then until it wasn't, it doesn't matter if there was work done for it. Which I mean, one, you don't know when Odyssey's coming. That <clears> honestly <throat> could be two years away, and there could be no work done on uh, console versions yet. So then there wouldn't and yeah, there, maybe. Wouldn't, there wouldn't have been anything finished. So we'll, we'll everything f- gets poured from PC at the end of the day. So we'll see. We'll have to start right. to wait and see. We'll see what I'm happens. Ju- I'm, just, I'm just I'm just I'm just uh, it's a thought experiment, Ryan. No, I know, I know, I know it's a thought experiment. Uh Joshua wants to know will Diablo 4 expansions be on Game Pass or separate? Uh presumably they'll be separate. Most expansions yeah, on on for games in Game Pass you have to buy. Even um Minecraft Dungeons did that. Yeah. Uh, Matthew says, "Were either of you 
really proud to see Phil take the high road and say that they're going to keep content parity for COD, but also mad about it. Well, no, no, they've been, but they, they've been saying that since this whole shindig has been going down. They've been saying like one of the things they were going to do was no exclusive skins and content parity and like all that stuff. That's been one and of they the... also they also put it in writing to the EU. Yeah. In some capacity. So but like yeah, I I think I I, I was saying this from day zero. You were Call of Duty Yeah, I said Call of Duty is a ritual. And Odyssey's not a ritual. Yeah. Yeah. Odyssey's not a ritual. And StarCraft isn't a ritual and Crash Bandicoot's not a ritual, but Call of Duty is an institution, and there's like there's lots of people who only buy a PlayStation or only buy an Xbox just for Call of Duty every year, and you know FIFA is as well. Like people people do that shit every year for FIFA or NBA 2K and, and some of these other kind of mass appeal kind of games, right? So it would it would have just been it would have been a massive it would have been an issue for Microsoft from a PR perspective, optics, and all that kind of stuff, if they were to try and weaponize Call of Duty, it would have been a lose-lose situation, you know. Um, and I don't think I don't think necessarily, you know, they would all of a sudden get tons of people well, switching platforms. It's either. interesting because you had you because this, what we mentioned that we did Xbox Two Plus One with Maddie on Tuesday, and while we were doing the show live, the interview with Phil dropped. Yes. So oh, Jez yeah. suddenly was like, I got to do work, right? He's like, he sort of stopped. And I knew it was like, oh, Jez, right? And we talked we talked about this with Maddie about Phil's comments. And Maddie sort of didn't like it because you're setting yourself up for like future stuff, right? You know, like what if after 10 years, Call of Duty is exclusive? Oh, but mm. Phil said in 2023 20, that they weren't going to do that to sell consoles. But now you are you know, 12 years later, like you're doing the perpetual thing. Like we will never, when you should never say never. And you were saying, it's not that you didn't like what he said. You also said, well, isn't game, putting it on game pass, weaponizing it. Right. That yeah. was, and or, or marketing. Like you said, well, what if they market call of duty next year and they sell call of duty bundles, uh, with Xbox consoles and the marketing just has Xbox on it. And I said to you, like, well, that's not necessarily weaponizing in the way that they're talking about. Like, they literally talked about how the exclusive skins and the and, and the exclusive betas as weaponizing it. Like, I don't think people think marketing is 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 a weaponization or putting it on Game Pass is that. You know, people people in the discourse might not think that, but like the average Joe walking around who doesn't isn't even aware of the fact that this, the certain skins are exclusive. They're just going to see a big Xbox banner on the side of a bus with Call of Duty next to it. That's weaponizing it, bro. Unless you're saying... I mean, unless semantics. You're, we can semantics all I mean, you unless want, you're like, saying that Microsoft it. is not going to market Call of Duty next year, or at all, period, where it's just, hey, it's just Call of Duty, and it has all the platforms listed, unless you think they're going to do that, at that point, I think they're they're really dumb if they do that. You know I what I mean? I do, too. I do, too, but I just think... I just think you know, making those kind of comments, I can I can already see like detractors and comments. I mean, but they're always going to be detractors. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm, each... not, I'm not saying they're wrong for doing it. I'm just saying, like, you know, it's 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 debatable what they consider weaponizing to be. You know, well, I, I consider I think... the marketing to be weaponized. I don't see that's where like me, you, and Maddie each had different takes because I don't consider Game Pass or marketing to be weaponization of Call of Duty. <clears throat> so. It is. It's not. It's, it's okay to be wrong. It's hundred percent not. How is it weaponization? Okay how is it weaponization to market something you yeah, own? I'm talking about the normies, bro. It doesn't it's, matter. It's, the normies aren't going to care who's mar- the normies. are like, where am I playing COD and where can I play it the cheapest potentially? The normies are going to see that it's available and be like, I, I got a PlayStation. I'm yeah. playing it on PlayStation. You or they'll know? be really, or they'll be like dumb parents who are like, oh, that's an Xbox exclusive. Much like that, people think Call of Duty is like PlayStation exclusive right well, now. Well, is it Microsoft's deal. fault that people are stupid? But they know people are stupid, and they, that's why they're going to weaponize it. Yeah, but that's I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying they're wrong for doing it. I'm just saying it's the weaponization. I don't, I don't agree that's weapon weaponization. I'm sorry, Jess. I'm, I disagree. <laughs> but with it's, you. Sem- it's semantics at the end of the day, man. Yeah. 
We have Johnny Six the Super Chat. He says, Hey, Ran and Jazz, I've been listening since Project Scorpio leaked. Damn, that's a long time. Today I turned 39. Oh, well, happy birthday, Johnny. Uh, I feel old. I have the day off and I get to listen to my favorite podcast live. Good hey. day so far. I hope you're enjoying the show and have a have a great birthday. And if you guys are enjoying the show I as well, this, bro. make sure you hit the like button for us. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Make us hit 101,000. I think we're almost there. And uh, subscribe and uh, share this out. Uh, let everybody know that we're live, even though we've already been live for like an hour, it looks like. Man, an hour goes by so fast. This podcast goes by so fast, doesn't it? It does, yeah. It's already it's it already does. been an hour, and I, it's like, damn. Uh, we have, damn, bro. We have Ultraman. Hey, Ran and Jazz, first time catching you live. Love the channel. Well, thank you for being here, and we love you. We have uh, Nintendo Don the Otaku. Rand, you're on the list. Oh, no, I'm on the list. I don't know what that means. Probably, oh, it's probably yeah. because I said that about Super Mario Wonder. I mean, we know, oh. we know, we know Don doesn't <laughs> like that, right? True that. Uh, Strong Born says, "Why doesn't Jez not download Super Mario Wonder on Rog Ally? It plays uh, S- Switch awesomely. Is Jez looking forward to his Lenvo Legion Go in a week? Are you? Did you decide to get that? Oh man, I've gone back and forwards on that. I pre-ordered it." I actually pre-ordered it, and then I was like, "Man, I don't need this," mm. but I still kind of want to pre-order it. Bro. Oh my god! Um, yeah, I I don't know. Um, but with regards to yeah, like yeah, play it I've on the wrong alley, bro. Emulate it. Yeah, yeah, I've seen people do that, and I can't because it's illegal. I thought it was I one. Of go the, to hell. I thought people would do it where it was like they they'll buy it on the Switch, and then they'll be like, "Well, because I bought it, I'm just gonna emulate it on the wrong alley now because I I spent money on it." Right? Yeah. Isn't that when I, people I talk know. about legal emulation, emulating things that you own? All you gotta yeah, do is I, just. I think that's legal in America, but I don't know if it, version version shifting is legal in Europe. I I I can't be, I just can't be bothered. It's a real answer. Um, I've got a Nintendo Switch Lite here somewhere. Well, my, my girlfriend's, but my girlfriend likes Mario, so I think I think she'll pick it up eventually, and well, I'll check it out there. But I'll play it when I go back to England, maybe. But then I got my backlog's insane, so I don't know, man. I still want to finish. I still haven't finished Metroid Dread, for God's sake. God, I was loving that game. And you haven't finished Metroid Persona Dread. Five? Yeah, yeah. We know about it. Name Metroid a game. Prime Remastered. Did you have you, did, I was playing that as well. Did you finish Cyberpunk: Phantom Liberty? Uh, no, I no, I haven't. I barely uh, touched it. Did you finish Baldur's Gate Three? Uh, I'm on. I just started Act Three. Okay, but no, yeah. not finished. There's a lot of games that haven't been finished. <clears throat> yes, uh, we have Jeremy asking Jeremy, Jez, how about a Warcraft prequel game where you play Sylvanas leading up to her becoming the Banshee Queen? I want more Warcraft games outside of World of Warcraft. Well, that wouldn't be a prequel. That would be Warcraft Three because that happened in Warcraft Three. A prequel would be something like I don't know, War of the Ancients or something. But um. I, yeah, the, I mean the Warcraft universe is pretty ripe for single player games, but this is this is the kind of issue that we've always had with ABK. If it ain't online, they don't they don't care, you know. But hopefully with Game Pass and Microsoft leading the charge, they'll be like, man, I can't believe you guys haven't made spin offs of any of these games. Like, where's the StarCraft shooter? Where's the Warcraft action RPG? They could totally they they could God of War Warcraft so easily, you mm. know, like like. Kratos is basically a orc shaman, essentially. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We can only hope. But even if it does happen, we're going to be waiting a very, very, very long time, I think. Yeah. Uh, Tim Dog says, reverse jinx. Even Rand and I joked about it. We sure did, Tim. We sure did talk about Jez's reverse jinx. It wasn't a reverse jinx, man. It was all legit. Yeah, sure it was. THX1138, uh, he says 649 to 699 is 3DO territory. The PS3 launched at 599. Indeed it was. Big Afro Man says, Hogloss is any game ABK develops or helps develops with Ubisoft will have the streaming rights. Indeed, that is true from what I could read. Uh, essentially, any game made by ABK in this next 15-year period is... They perpetually own the streaming lights for it, but then again, Microsoft sold the streaming lights to them anyways, and that just tells you what they really Microsoft really feels about cloud streaming at this point in time. So, you know, 
I don't think it really matters. I, I think they're betting that Ubisoft will just quit cloud streaming because it's a big waste of time. You think so? Right. Probably. Hmm. I mean, I don't think cloud streaming has a future, man. It's too expensive. And companies would rather spend that bandwidth on artificial intelligence right now. Yeah, but Sony's not interested in AI, and they just started up their streaming service. They have to rent those sh- service from someone, bro. True. I don't. And it's Amazon, most likely, I would imagine. <clears throat> but either way, what Sony hopes- doesn't have its own. Sony doesn't have its. I mean, Sony has servers, but it doesn't have like. It doesn't have the infrastructure. They rent that infrastructure, presumably, from Amazon. I don't think they they have their own global cloud footprint like Microsoft and Amazon and Google do. Like even even if Google if even Google didn't want to deal with that shit and they have their own server infrastructure. So I don't know, man. We'll see we'll see what happens with cloud streaming. I'm kinda sad about it because I like I like the idea of just being able to like whip my phone out and play some Diablo 4, you know, instead of Diablo that trash Diablo more instead. But um I don't think Microsoft believes in it anymore, man. I don't. Uh, Benjamin says Xbox needs to look back on what they did with their most sold console, the Xbox 360, and learn what made that console sold for that much, and then repeat those tactics for their next or current console, but with more content. Part of it was Sony's fuck up. Yeah, part of it was PlayStation making a really hard to uh, dev for cell processor and p- pricing the system at 600. My- part of it was Microsoft having the one year lead. Uh, part of it was also the games are exclusive to the console. They, they, Microsoft at the time wasn't putting everything on PC. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of factors. Can they ever approach that number again? The 80 million? Maybe. I think so. Maybe they, maybe they could. Maybe they can't. Um, I mean, we know why the 360... It, the 360 it was essentially what the PlayStation is now. In America, like it was the de facto console. You wanted to play Madden, you wanted to play FIFA, you wanted to play these games. You got a 360. Because the P- the PS3 in the beginning was uncool. It was uncool to have a PlayStation 3, and it wasn't really it wasn't really cool to have a PlayStation until the PlayStation 4. Now, granted, in Europe that was a different story. The PlayStation 3 did really well in Europe in comparison to to, in, to the US. But can Mike? I think it's more Microsoft can do everything right they can make incredible games and all that stuff but to really gain the market share that they would need to go from selling 50 million to 80 million against the ps5 or ps6 they would probably also have to hope for a a fuck up like playstation Mm -hmm. screwing up somehow or nintendo screwing up somehow um because somebody always screwed up you know, Xbox with the Xbox One, PlayStation with the PlayStation 3, Nintendo with the Wii U. Uh, and this gen, I mean, is, I don't know. I mean, I guess you can maybe say Xbox screwed up in uh, 2022 with not having Series X's available, but the screw up wasn't as as bad as it was, you know, with the Xbox One. So well, everyone, everyone had chip shortages to some degree. Yeah. So it was kind of like, yeah, they screwed up, but everyone struggled in some kind of capacity. I mean, I could see Xbox selling a lot more if they put out a lot more Starfield caliber games uh, closer to each other. Because as we'll talk about, like people really wanted Starfield and they went out and bought console for it. And if you can have that type of game more consistently, then you'll sell more consoles. Shocker. But, you know, also at the same time, you're not going to sell as as many as you can because Microsoft puts all their games on PC, not only on Steam, but also on, you know, their own PC service. So you are, you know, <clears throat> suppressing the maximum console sales. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, we have uh, Big Afro Man, he says, it's technically possible for Halo or another game exclusive to Xbox to come to PlayStation. For example, if 343 makes a new Halo and any ABK devs help them, Ubisoft could stream that game to PlayStation or Nintendo. Sure. Assuming Ubisoft licenses 
their service to PlayStation and any of the ABK teams help on Halo, which I doubt they will. I, I doubt we'll see a lot of inter-publisher uh, collaborations, I guess is what I'm saying. I doubt we'll see many Bethesda Studios helping Xbox Game Studios or ABK Studios helping Bethesda Studios or Bethesda Studios helping ABK Studios. I don't think we'll see that sort of... Um, no that sort of uh, collaboration go on. I think the publish I think the studios within the publishers will all help each other. Like id will help machine games, machine games will help arcane stuff like that. But I don't think you'll see a scenario where, where, Hey, you have Zenimax online working on something and, Oh, wouldn't you know it? Infinity Ward helped out on it too. I don't think so. It'll be the Bethesda studios helping. And with the Activision studios, it'll be the Activision studios helping. I don't think you not saying that they all couldn't get, get together and have like a huge uh I. like a huge studio leadership meeting between Xbox Bethesda and ABK where they can exchange tips, tricks, uh that sort of stuff which I don't think would fall under that uh sort of thing where it was just like hey, this is what we do, but I don't think you'll see Infinity Ward helping out uh Compulsion Games or Treyarch helping out the coalition with Gear Six, you know. Yeah, I agree. So I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, Just James became the newest member of their channel. Thank you. Uh, Crazy Make Gaming says, "Have you guys ever heard or played Seven Days to Die? And if so, what are your thoughts? Can't wait for the console version to finally be up to date. I mean, I have heard of Seven Plays to Die or Seven Days to Die, of course, but I have never played it. I don't know about you, Jez." I've heard of it as yeah, I've heard of it, never played it. Um So yeah. <laughs> I can't yeah, I, I mean yeah. I don't know, I don't I can barely remember it. Um I do remember it being announced for console and then just hearing nothing about it since. I mean it's I on console. It's hundred percent on console. I think it was even in Game Pass for a long time. Oh, was it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, maybe I yeah, maybe I'm mixing it with something else. Uh, good old Collingwood. He says, Rand, your uh, post-schedule podcast sounds sweet. Why well, not end the podcast early and get to that sweet stuff right away? Nah. Good things can wait. You know, Spider-Man's going to be there regardless of whether or not I end the podcast right now or later. You know, I got a, I got a full week to play through Spider-Man before I need to play on Lake 2. So I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm perfectly happy to podcast for four hours to keep you guys company to keep all the truckers happy as they go about their busy days or anybody who's like working uh you know at a desk and can have their you know their their raycons in and they can basically half the day <laughs> is taken up Raycon. by us talking about uh about video games and stuff and xbox like i'm more than happy to do that so uh sunlit man and spider-man 2 can can wait uh, just James says, love the channel. Now watching episode one onwards. Oh man, you're going back to the beginning. Woo. Wow. That's hardcore, man. Dude, I haven't even gone back to the beginning. I don't remember what that was like. I, I do maybe wonder do like how we've progressed. Have we gotten better? Have we gotten worse? Have we regressed? What were we like back in 2017? Know. Cause I, I was a podcast Good. veteran back then. You were a podcast virgin. I think. No, no, no! I did a podcast. On oh yeah, Central you did. Pod, the Central podcast. I did like thirty episodes of that. But yeah, I, I was pretty, pretty green. You're green behind the ears. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Nowadays, cool. you're like a pro, dude. You can do this. You can do this yeah, stuff man. with blindfolded while you're playing Overwatch too. <laughs> you know, you're you're just a podcast and pro. Everybody wants a piece of you. Doing Gaz's show this weekend. Doing uh, ILP on Sunday. Like mm -hmm. you're just you're just a superstar. Hey man, gotta gotta get that bread, bro. And JJ saying says, "Hey, Rand and Jez, love the podcast. Roblox finally coming to PlayStation is ironic because of child safety concerns. Also, Jez deserves to play Diablo. I don't know about deserves. Oh, bless him. Does Jez deserve anything? I don't. I don't know. I definitely deserve it, man. You definitely okay. deserve it. Let's talk about um, let's talk about Xbox marketing real quick, shall oh. we? They uh, they dropped a brand new trailer, which is going to be the trailer that they show this holiday, which is, Jez, 
suddenly Microsoft has games and now they're like, hey, we can market something that we actually can sell. Because last year, everybody was looking high and low for the marketing and there was none because what were you going to market, right? Mm, um, yeah. So, you know, you had the whole marketing stuff from Power Your Dream stuff for the launch of the console, right? Which was kind of live action where people would come and they'd turn on their console and then they'd be transported to a beautiful world where you're like Master Chief or you're like Assassin's Creed stuff. I, I'm, I'm sure everybody remembers those Power Your Dreams commercials from the launch of the Series X. Well, now we're a couple years later and they're starting up round two of the marketing. Uh, this time it's essentially called Wake Up and Dream, but it's still the same, same formula. Like somebody's, you know, essentially playing and, you know, she's, walking down corridor and suddenly she's in the world of Senwa, right? Senwa was there leading the charge with the troll attacking them. But then like, Oh, it's Forza Motorsport and there's a car driving around the track and Hey, look, you're in, you're in a uh, cyberpunk and there's Johnny Silverhand and Keanu Reeves and stuff. Right. So they're doing all that sort of thing. It's going to be their new marketing beat this holiday. Right, because you have the the three consoles you can sell. You have the Series X, Series S, and Series S Black with one terabyte, um, and you got games to sell because you got Starfields out, you got Forza Motorsports out, uh, you know Hi-Fi Rush. Even though it's not in the ad, uh, it's still available. I think by most people's accounts, I think people would agree <clears throat> that this year was the best year for Game Pass. There are a lot of bangers in there, like Liza P, which just sold a million copies, um, and then yesterday. Microsoft rented out the the sphere in Vegas. The sphere, yeah. And yeah. they they put the ad on that, which looked incredible because I think TwitchCon is just starting, and yeah, so like they're gearing up for the marketing, and it's kind of amazing, like when you have things to sell and some games that suddenly it's like, hey, we need to let people know. Um, I guess the question I have for you isn't so much what do you think of the marketing because it's like whatever it's. You know, I have some some people say like they think it's lame, and it's like, eh, it still fits the theme they're going with. The one thing I want to point out that grabbed my attention was the spotlight on Hellblade Two: Senua's Saga, or Senua's. This is gonna be Senua's Saga because that's when Sen- Senua's Sacrifice. All the games that they showed in this ad, from Forza Motorsport to Starfield to Cyberpunk, they're all out and available. Right, and I think it's wise for them to highlight that. Like Cyberpunk's out, and it's got the expansion, and anytime you can highlight, you know, Count of Reeves is is a win, right? Forza Motorsport looks fantastic. It's in the ad. Starfield, you know, did what it did, number one. But they're they're focusing on Hellblade two, which combined with the video that. Ninja Theory dropped today going over their costuming and how they were bringing Senua to life and how you're going to be more immersed in that stuff. I sort of get the impression that Hellblade 2 is a lot closer than we think. Yes? Yes. I actually had exactly the same thought as you. I saw Hellblade. I was like, well, that's that's the interesting one. Because I, when I saw Hellblade, I was thinking like, oh, okay, they, are they going to show Clockwork Revolution or they're going to show... Um, uh, south of midnight which by the way just won a it award did. for each trailer it won an um, award it was a really good trailer it was awesome. really good yeah it was uh yeah shout out to them for when it, the, that trailer was just incredible frankly um but no they only showed hellblade and it kind of suggests to me that hellblade is part of this marketing cycle which probably means it's gonna drop next year early next probably year. Mean, yeah yeah maybe and also i expect a major marketing be Maybe at the Game Awards. Possibly. I mean, they could potentially drop a trailer at the Game Awards with the release date, which would get a lot of traction. I mean, to be fair, that is the very first Xbox Series X game that we saw. And that was all the way back in 2019. And, wow. you know, we, we've way. seen that trailer. We have saw the trailer last year. We saw the other trailer at the Game Awards two years ago. Uh you know they're dropping these little behind the scene vig- vignettes vignettes and it's in yeah. it's in front and center in Microsoft's marketing push that they're going to be running this holiday which to me implies the game's coming like real soon like i'm thinking february march april time frame 
because all the other games yeah, are available. So. Like you know, avowed, and maybe maybe it just fits the aesthetic more because it's more it's because it's more of a photorealistic game where avowed isn't and towerborn it isn't where it kind of fits mm. with the whole wake up and dream aspect where it's like Forza Motorsport, realistic cars, boom, you know, Starfield, the imagination, science fiction, right? You're waking up from the dream, the sci-fi, here's the ship, boom, uh, you know, cyberpunk, once again, dealing with the imagination and stuff. And then you have another, like, I, I feel like in that sort of ad, when you're, when you're, when you're tailoring it to uh, an audience, that maybe not be completely all 100% all up in Xbox like we are and like our our Xbox 2 listeners are that you need to sort of wow them to a certain extent and showing off not saying like Towerborn is going to be a bad game but showing off the cartoony look of 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 Towerborn or how Avowed looks currently maybe is not the best way but <clears throat> st- I suppose like how like when- looks impressive yeah. right and fits into that whole theme that they're yeah, going yeah, with yeah. for the marketing, you know. When you've got, when you've got like, because it costs uh, like six hundred thousand dollars to to rent that sphere out for one day, I think is what I what yeah, I heard, yeah, or like four hundred thousand or something. Yes, it's 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 in the hundred thousands. It's a lot of money to rent out that sphere, and I think when you've got like you know a million LEDs to play with, you probably don't show. A cartoony game on that screen. Probably not. You want to show, yeah. You want to show something that sort of matches the the medium that you've got, which is high tech, crazy, super screen, three D parallax effect. You know, with this sort of hologrammatic sort of depth of field illusion stuff. I don't think you use a Pixar star game for that. No, because you're you right. Know, they did do depth of field, right? You saw the star field craft. It sort of kind of came out of the screen before it went to the jump. The troll reached out into the crowd. The oh, car cool. drove into essentially the crowd as they're watching. So like they definitely did do that. So yeah. Yep. But it, it, you know, I mean, it, it's, Hey, it's about time to, to market when you got, when you know, you got things like Starfield selling the console. It's about, it's about time and how, so yeah, Hellblade to me, I think we either get it at the game awards with the release date or they do another January developer direct where they drop the release date for it. And yeah. honestly, I was even thinking, Jez, and because this will get us into the Phil Spencer stuff about his his quotes. Um, you know, like they're not really doing anything with the ABK this year, it seems. And we know that Bobby Kotick is leaving, but I sort of feel like you could do a celebrate, like you could do a developer direct. And then show off the games, but then also kind of slide ABK into it, and then you know drop the Game Pass titles. Maybe even get maybe even get an introduction to some of the Activision teams in a developer direct, even if they don't have a game to announce, right? Mm. Uh, sort of like a welcome to Xbox thing, which they did for um, they did in the Bethesda roundtable, which they're not going to be able to do for reasons. You could essentially combine those into, you know, a 45-minute developer direct early next year. I don't know. I, I feel like that would work. Would, would, do you think it would? I agree. And I think one of, the, one of the big takeaways that Microsoft has had from 2021 and 2022 to, to you know, was it 2022 or 2021 that was really bad? 2022. Yeah. Well, I think one of the, the main takeaway they've got from that year is we can't let this happen again. We can't let people think like we don't have anything coming. We can't like we can't exist in this universe where where people just assume Xbox is a platform for very very occasional things. So, if I was Microsoft and I was sort of sitting on all this stuff from all these different studios that I now basically locked into Xbox marketing in perpetuity. I'd want to have a steady cadence of this is what's on the way. This is what's on the way. This is what's on the way, you know? And I think they're going to do that. And I think like this, the stuff with the Sophia and the, the power your dreams, the new trailer and all that kind of stuff. This is just the beginning. You know, this is part of a, this is part of a, a really long marketing campaign that ties in dovetails into black Friday I'm expecting there to be discounts on Black Friday as well. 
that end. But also, like, I think they'll probably have more shows, the presence of the Game Awards, developer direct, and all that kind of stuff, and just keep it going. I think they really, really don't want to have another, you know, 2022 situation where we just left one in, you know. And now they've got so many goddamn studios under their belt, I don't think that's going to happen again. You know, if, if, if we do get another 2022 after all this money, <laughs> something's really, really, really going wrong over there. Yeah, everything's sort of piling up. Because I, I was sitting there with Colt and we were trying to, like, figure out, okay what when can we expect certain games to come out and a lot of them you like look at and like damn 2025 2020 like they're stacked from 2025 and beyond right Mm -hmm. because like abk you're probably not going to get anything too immediate with abk i mean hell it took two years before bethesda started to drop stuff right they bought them in 2020 but the deal cleared in 2021 and we didn't really get anything new like, cause we got the Death Loop drop in 2022, and we got the Ghostwire Tokyo this year. But like, Hi-Fi Rush, Redfall, and Starfield were all this year. It took two years. So like, even when you look at things ABK might be doing, because there, you know, there there might be other games they're working on other than ABK. And if that's the case, you know, that they're not necessarily, you know, you still get you get your cod every year. But some of the other titles may may be a couple years uh, from now. So you may not get like the full, okay, here are any exclusives, if there are any, coming, you know, uh, 2025 and beyond. Just because it's, you know, games take quite some time to make these days. Right? Yep. So, uh, but yeah, it's like as ABK gets rolling, Bethesda will be, be rolling and, and Xbox Game Studios will be rolling. So you just add on top of it for just more stuff. You know, and I don't think that I, I don't think the acquisitions are going to stop either. No, I think like to to put some of these to put some of these pla- these plans and this potential in place, like a lot. I've seen one of the a big part of the discourse revolves around Microsoft pulling studios off Call of Duty. Right. I don't think that's going to happen. Not in the short term. I don't think you're all of a sudden going to see like High Moon go, go back to working on Transformers. I know a lot of people want to see that happen. But the Call of Duty machine, th- this trend does not stop. You know, it prints it prints so much money, and you know, it's it's a case of like, we don't want to disrupt that ritual, not just for the for the people who play Call of Duty, but also the bit. Hang on, let me finish. Okay, okay. And uh, so, and also for the for the the business aspects of this stuff, right? So I think they're going to be acquiring not just. You know, people are saying like they they need to acquire I don't know Sega, Sega or Capcom Sega. Or, yeah. or whoever. I think they need to acquire support studios. They need to acquire like certain affinity and Crystal Dynamics out of Embracer Group and and this kind of and start building up this infrastructure to make good on some of these promises and some of this potential of like making a StarCraft shooter and and doing this and doing that and doing that because. You know, you you can't do any of this stuff if you don't have people to do it. And all the studios that exist in ABK today, and I'm sure like in the longer term future, some of them will be working on new stuff and maybe we will get a singularity and a raven again someday. But it's not going to be in the short term. If you want short term, you probably need to acquire more and acquire support studios and that kind of stuff. And maybe I'm wrong. Well, yeah, I was just going to mention about a Call of Duty. You said they're probably not going to change anything up, you know, because it's, it makes a lot of money. They're not going to go biannual. Well, I mean, we know that Activision was planning for this year's COD to be just an expansion pack, right? And then they essentially, kind of they essentially pivoted, and it's now Modern Warfare 3. But the problem that it's Xbox... It's still kind of an expansion it's pack. It's still kind of an expansion pack. But the problem that Xbox might have is... They're going to have to be very careful with how COD is handled because I don't think this year's Call of Duty is going to review well at all. And it looks like even Treyarch had to bring forward their Zombies mode, which might have been in their game next year. So you're maybe already compromising next year's Call of Duty game because you need something for this year's. Where if you... like, Because now Microsoft... Now Microsoft is responsible for Call of Duty, right? 
And Activision's like, well, we're not, we're not respond like we doing this because if we didn't have a new COD this year, our our shareholders would destroy us and our stock price would fall. Well, dude, so well, now dude, it's on Microsoft I, to make sure that the yeah. the thing that they spent seventy, well, one of the things <clears> they spent seventy billion dollars on is healthy and is good because if you continuously, you know, are, are like, hey, does the three year cycle work? And, you know, sometimes when you, you know, you hear from developers or whatever that, no, it doesn't, it doesn't work because you end up with these half-baked games. So if Microsoft really doesn't take the initiative, if they see the fact that the three years is not working, then they could, you know, Call of Duty could essentially start to plummet, right? I mean, we saw that with with Vanguard, right? Yeah, sure. But I'm intrigued by the idea that I'm intrigued by how people will react if it's Microsoft who announces that there is no Call of Duty next year. Imagine, imagine that. Imagine, imagine what reactions would look like. I think people. I, well, it depends. If you're Xbox fan, PlayStation fan is probably like, probably. Well, and we know there is one next year. It's Treyarch's game, unless you're saying they're going to delay that. I mean, I mean, whenever, because it's every year. Imagine the, the first year that Call of Duty skips a year. And Microsoft's like, or Activision's like, yeah, we we are breaking the cycle, you know. It'd be interesting because like, I think some people would be like, good, we want, we want better games, to? so take your time. Maybe the Call of Duty YouTubers would hate it or the ones that rely on streaming Warzone and the new COD content every single year would hate it. I think there would be split reactions by it, depending on where you – like, would it matter to me? I wouldn't care. I'd be like, I would much rather have a better Call of Duty game, and I think them trying to force games out every single year – uh, push it makes the games worse, so I wouldn't mind if it was every other year. But you know, I'm not a Call of Duty YouTuber that relies on it, so maybe those people would be pissed. I don't know, but it isn't it wouldn't hurt their stock price like it would approach, like right. Activision would. You know, but you mentioned like the other studios not being pulled off. Beanox just did a whole refresh. If they're stuck on COD, why are they doing a whole studio refresh? You know what I mean? Like new logo. Yeah, but why do you need to rebrand if you're just a support studio for COD and you're not doing something of your own? I don't know. I don't know. Them rebranding gives me gives me this thought that they have their own game coming. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Let's, uh, that was that was just some of uh, what I was thinking. Uh, what else we got here? If you guys are enjoying the show, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button as well. We have a. Uh, Jaguar Gaming Network, member for 36 months. He says, love you guys. 36 months. Wow. Happy third anniversary, my lover. Has it really been that long? Three years? Damn. Uh, Spartan Damn. says, i like to see an update on all Activision games showing Xbox or Microsoft logos across all platforms. I'd love to see the ponies seething and crying. <laughs> I've seen people like say Microsoft should really step in and make sure that the Xbox logo is front and center when you load up Call of Duty on PlayStation. Oh man, that'd be funny. Uh, but I don't, I don't know if that that'll actually happen. Leaky Hump says, "Chance Halo gets nominated for best ongoing game." Ah, Ooh. well that that leads into an interesting topic because we, that is a topic. So the maybe Halo we should, Infinite should, comeback. Should change well, we, we'll just we'll just jump off of it from here, right? Um, Halo Infinite is on the comeback trail, Jazz. It they, is. They released is season indeed. five. A lot of the reaction to it seems to be incredibly positive. It was uh, doing. I'm not saying it was doing incredible numbers on Steam, but it was doing. It was doing like much better numbers on Steam than it, than it had been. Uh, it's moving up the chart on Xbox Games Most Played. Are we seeing three four three and uh, is is Pierre doing what he did for Master Chief Collection, or is he doing what he is he doing for Halo Infinite what he did for Master Chief Collection? Are we seeing? Are we? Are we actually get? Are we in the the the, the renaissance of Halo Infinite right now? What do you What do you, you think? Know, I mean, it's been it's been going on for a little while, actually. I think, like, I remember maybe through season four, people started saying, "Oh, actually, this is getting pretty good now," and I started seeing the positive groundswell there. But the some of the stuff they're putting to forge like ai specifically with the ai and the scripting tools and stuff like that it has become like almost memeable now 
and you start i've started seeing halo stuff pop up on youtube shorts and you know and it's it sort of seems to be you know gathering pace with streamers who influence you know younger gamers and stuff like that and user generated content is always great to market your game you know because i i did an article this morning about this someone in halo forge uh, dan the bloke on on uh, twitter built a pokemon battle st- stadium in forge mode round you can spawn you can spawn halo units with a pokeball and make them battle complete with health bars and everything so <laughs> Uh, people are, are going ham with Forge mode right now, and um, obviously user generate content's a big reason why games like you know Fallout still have a healthy player base many many years after the fact. So yeah, heavy lifting um, does seem to have fallen on the new team that's emerged under Pierre, and um, you know after Bonnie Ross exited the studio and it does seem like halo may be going towards a better place you know but i think the proof will really be in what does the next halo look like because i think it's kind of i'm not saying it's easy to build on what already exists right but i think that'll be the true test for 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 the new team there ultimately is can they deliver the kind of halo that threads that very, very tiny needle head, which is appealing to new fans, younger gamers, the core halo fans who were very angry when they added sprint to the game. I remember you guys. And, um, and, and then while also making it accessible, but also deep and also appealing to the hardcore, like, can they thread that needle? Because, that's kind of where Halo needs to be if he wants to complete compete with games like Fortnite or Call of Duty. And then you could get into this argument like, does it really need to compete with these games? And I did see that take today on Twitter, and I can't remember which journalist said it. But someone was like, I saw it, I think it was an article or maybe it was a YouTube video or something, but I saw it. the take was basically, um, Halo's resurging, but is it enough? You know, and it's got... 20,000 concurrent players on Steam right now, I believe, somewhere in that vicinity. We don't know how many people are playing on Xbox. Presumably more people are playing on Xbox. I would I would have assumed that more people are probably playing on Xbox because, you know, there's no competition with Counter-Strike 2 or anything like that on Xbox. So so let's just, let's just conservatively estimate that it's got 50,000 concurrent players right now. It's probably more than that, I would imagine. Um, but, you know... How does that stack up against your Call of Duties and your Fortnites and all that kind of stuff, you know? And I suppose one aspect of, you know, 343 had the layoffs, which were terrible. But at the same time, if you've got less staff, you don't need as much cash flow. Maybe you don't need to make a game that's truly Fortnite levels of engagement, you know? But I don't know how Microsoft feels about that. Do they want, do they want Call of Halo, their Halo games? Do they want them to be on that kind of level? Are they happy with them being sort of, you know, Halo at the end of the day? Because that's what Halo is. Halo is very different. It's very, I don't want to say niche, but it kind of is niche in in the in today's times. I don't know. Because you you are more of a Halo guy than me. And I suppose it's, maybe more so well, on there the was also part. I think I also saw a report saying that Ainsley from Season Gaming basically said that there is a new campaign in the works or whatever. A new, Which, a new a sequel, you mean? I don't, I don't know if it's a sequel, a new campaign. You didn't say com- no, you didn't he said, say did he say a sequel? Season. Was the sequel was? What did, he, did he say? A I, sequel? Can't, I can't remember exactly what he said, but I remember there was there was. You know, he was also mentioned as like Hoglaw's like co-host, so he got the Jez Jez and Rand treatment. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, but I um I uh I did see that um. Oh, what was it? I lost my trial of thought then. The problem with Halo Infinite was always its lack of content. Like, people have this weird... They want to rewrite history and tell you that Halo Infinite was trash from the very beginning. But that wasn't the case. Halo Infinite reviewed very highly. 
because the campaign was quite solid and the multiplayer was fantastic. Halo oh, Infinite good. fell off fell off because they didn't have a post launch plan. Everything was delayed and everything took forever. And in this day and age of, you know, live services up the wazoos, once you run out of content or people feel like they've done everything and there's nothing left to do, they're going to go back to their old games, right? They're going to go back to whatever else they were playing before. And so Microsoft did a cleaned house and you, you have Pierre there and now they're firing on all cylinders. People are talking about how it's never felt better. They got all this content. I even saw that it, it was mo- like on the um, global bestsellers list or whatever on Steam. It moved up to number six, which counts revenue, so, which means people are buying the Battle Pass because no, you know, nobody, you don't have to buy Halo multiplayer. So people are spending money on the Battle Pass, and the Battle Pass cosmetics do look pretty damn good, like all the, you know, the 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 flood stuff for this thing. So we've seen games go through this where they launch as a live service and they launch kind of barren and people drop away and then suddenly they go through their resurgence phase and Uh it was kind of only a matter of time before halo went through it it's but the question is okay can you ride this out where it can you get halo infinite back up to what it was at launch where you had 200,000 people playing on steam and you were in the top five for Xbox, and just run that as your platform for Halo? Or are you basically been like, all right, we need to launch a new game because we need to get that that hype cycle started again, and we need to get more people to give you know a second look to Halo. So it's like, as, as good as Halo Infinite is right now, and I've seen people talk about, oh, I really wish this is just a platform, 343 better not move on from this. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's business. So it's like, are they making money? Are are the number of players they have right now, uh, what you know, within whatever uh, expectations they have? And if the answer to that is no, it's like, hey, yeah, people are enjoying it now. And me- they'll continue to enjoy it if it's still like, oh, we could do better. Imagine if we launched Halo Infinite but had actual post-launch content. Like, where could it be? So I, I do wonder if you're going to have this thing where um, in a couple of years, uh, you know, Creative Assembly comes out, or not, not Creative Assembly, Certain Affinity comes out with whatever they're working on or 343 does, or even you get in the next gen and if there's like a Halo Infinite 2, like, because I sort, I sort of feel like no matter how good the resurgence is for Halo currently, it, it's never going to reach the peaks that it, that it once experienced in the beginning and I, I feel like the only way to get that again is if you launch a new Halo game. Because then you mm. could go through the marketing cycle. You could go through that hype cycle. You can get people to look at Halo once again and be like, oh, Halo's back. Let me check this out. Oh, it's got campaign. It's got multiplayer and stuff. Um, and I, I'm, I'm curious to see like which way they go with it. And, and, and it sort of seems like they're going to go with that way because... It doesn't sound like Halo Infinite's going to be the platform for the future. I mean, it was planned to, right? They they talked about ten year plan for Halo Infinite, you know, and that would be twenty twenty one to twenty thirty one. Does it last that long? Um, I don't know, but yeah. I mean, in two years' time, if they keep on grinding out at this and the and the updates get continuously better and better, maybe Halo Infinite does come, and now it's averaging one hundred and fifty thousand on Steam. And now it's in the top 10 on Xbox. And at that point, maybe it's like, do we abandon this to start over again? And I suppose it's... And that's it's sort also, of... The, sorry, I was going to say, and that's sort of the problem of modern game development. Is... If Halo... If, like, you would have already had another Halo game coming out pretty soon, right? To move people away from Infinite. But now that Halo Infinite is having resurgence and who knows how it's going to go, but you already have a Halo Infinite game being made, but it takes so long. It's like by the time that game comes out, either it's not needed or people have moved on or maybe there's a new fad, right? Like Halo Infinite came out and it didn't have Battle Royale when Battle Royale at the time was essentially what people wanted from a modern, you know, first person shooter. But it was just like Halo Infinite was going through all these revisions and stuff that when it started development, 
it was essentially a hero shooter like Overwatch because that's what was popular at the time. And by the end, when I would love that. By the way, I'm sure you would have. But the point is, <laughs> it's like it takes so long in the development that you run against these trends and it missed out on the biggest trend of all, which was the battle royale. So now you start <clears> off a new game. But what happens? What happens if like certain affinities games is is three years out, right, or whatever is next? But if in it's three not canceled. Or, or that, but I'm just saying, whatever Halo is next. But what happens in what happens if Halo Infinite is a bona fide super success by that point? What if it really completes the the comeback? But does it? But we have to move on because we just spent four years making this game, right? It's sort of the problem with modern game development. Everything takes too takes too long, and you focus on these trends that may not be relevant anymore. It's kind of what's going on with Suicide Squad, right? Again, this started development when everybody wanted live services, but now everyone's against them, and people are looking at that game like, "What are you doing?" So, I, but I'm really happy for for all the Halo fans that have been like playing the game. Forge looks incredible. You know, it, it, there's nothing like it when people are super happy about Halo, and um, it's 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 a joy to watch the people being like, people be like, "Yeah, people are finally back on Halo again," because it was always good. It just lacked content. You know? well, dude, this is this is the thing about chasing trends. Instead of chasing trends, set the trend. You know, right. actually trend. innovate. What what a crazy idea that is. You know, I mean, everyone everyone basically looked at what happened with PUBG and Fortnite. PUBG came out, blew up. Fortnite launched, and it was this sort of weird, lame sort of build of cartoony zombie survival game that literally was. It was lame. Let's mm. let's just let's just not let's just be completely honest with it. For, Fortnite as it was was never yeah, going to catch up. Fortnite saved the world, so, right? Though, the campaign stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I played it quite a lot. I tried to like it, and it was just it was just bland and boring and whatever. But then they pivoted so hard. Yes, I've never seen did. a game pivot so hard. And I suppose like it's a testament to the fact that they you know they make Unreal Engine and they they were able to pivot the whole game. They got sued by PUBG. PUBG, remember? They sued yeah, him. Yeah, well, they, they they were gonna sue them. Yeah. They threatened to sue them, and yeah, it was it was this whole thing. And but then you know, yeah, and then Apex Legends came out, which again, battle royale, but a slight different take on it. And then by that point, the market's kind of become saturated. And now you've got like Epic doing layoffs because Fortnite is no longer the cash cow that it once was, supposedly. Um, you, know, you know, and all this you know, kind. Of... Do you want to know what's funny? Do you know what killed that? But Epic's uh, user-generated content. Epic created its mean? own downfall. Uh, because I saw a report that basically said more people spend time in user-generated user content than like playing you know, the main thing and they spend less money and all that stuff. So essentially, essentially uh, right. Epic Games created its own downfall Ooh. because more people are playing the, the, the user-generated content and they're not spending the money that they used to spend on it. Well, that just means them they're, they're not monetizing the user generated content very well because that's Roblox's bread and butter, isn't it? But True. Roblox takes a fat cut on everything that's built through their system. But anyway, that's a, that's a completely separate discussion, you know. Um, maybe Microsoft will run up against this issue with with Forge mode, and now everyone no everyone's playing Forge mode Forge mode instead of buying the Battle Pass. But I don't know. Um, I'm sure Microsoft will be happy just if people are playing it. But anyway. Um, but that's the thing like you don't have to worry about being first to a trend if you actually just set the trend yourself and and yeah it's it's risky to try and innovate a new a new paradigm i remember that there was that um do you remember that show which sort of like had the time time stop turn-based mechanics thing where like i can't remember what it's called now with the portals or whatever that kind of uh, it was kind of yeah, like, popular, the, like popular for like five seconds it was basically like kind of like copying Halo Two to a certain extent. Splitgate, I think it was, right? Was it? Splitgate, yeah. Splitgate was like this massive trend, and it was like innovative, and it was like, oh yeah, this is actually pretty cool. But then, like, it was like, oh, actually, we don't care about this. And then, you know, Splitgate, I think's not a thing now. Well, um, I think they're doing a sequel or something. They like stopped yeah, and they're like put everything into the <laughs> the second game. Yeah, I don't know, but. That's the risk with innovation, I suppose. But then you've got, with with trend chasing, you've got the other risk of being late to the trend, I suppose. Yeah, or not doing the trend at all, or just 
fucking do it. Because I sort of wonder, like, what Halo Infinite would have been at launch if there was a Battle Royale, or if the Battle Royale came out, you know, six Mm -hmm. months later or something, and said, like, they didn't do it. So, I don't know. It's it's an interesting discussion. But, uh, you know, hey, Pierre, if you can bring back 343... And Halo, like you, you're essentially you save Master Chief Collection. Could you save Halo Infinite? You'd be a god at that point in the community, right? Yeah, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have expected that to be honest. So we'll, we'll see what happens. It is, it is nice to see the player crown up. You know, if they keep on with the positive stuff, maybe yeah, it keeps I've, on, I've it visited, keeps on climbing. <coughs> I've visited three four three a couple of times, and that studio, they are. They are so passionate about Halo, you know, mm-hmm. and I, I always see like people say like, oh, you know, I miss Bungie, blah, 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 blah. A lot of the people who worked at 343 used to work at Bungie, yeah. you know, so they sure did. It's, it's yeah. And it's it's not it's not as if like it's a completely soulless factory that Microsoft set up to, to shepherd this game it, full of super passionate people and who love live and breathe Halo and stuff. So. um it's obviously it's great when we see studios get a win. Yeah, like as far as the super chat, Chance Halo gets nominated for best ongoing game. Doubtful because I think the people who nominate that stuff probably aren't playing Halo. They're playing stuff like Genshin Impact and Fortnite and things of that nature. If you just go back and look I, yeah. at the games that are nominated in that category, Sea of Thieves hasn't been nominated once. I don't think the the representation. So, I mean. I, I always get in trouble when I criticize the Game Awards, but I just think the rep- the representation in the panel is just not good enough, you know? I mean, it, there's, there are games that should be nominated that are never nominated. There are, there are genres that are just completely ignored, and these aren't even genres that I like, but it's not... And this is, like, things I've heard... You know, I've heard game devs say similar stuff to this. It's not, represent- it's not representative of the industry at large. You know, it's representative of like what the game journalists like to play. At the end of the mm-hmm. day, you know, um, and that's that's not that's not a fair reflection of the industry. You know, and honestly, a lot of the games that we're talking about, like they're not even games anyone on this podcast like likes to play. You know, there are a lot of games that are like on mobile and stuff, which are no less complicated, no less innovative, and no less built by passionate people that deserve you know, more recognition, honestly. You know, I don't give a crap about mobile games personally. It's not my cup of tea. But the fact that like there's just so little recognition in that space is is just kind of emblematic of how poorly uh, they they think about diversity in genres when it comes to that panel. And that fits it's for that it's for that kind of reason why loads of games get overlooked, you know. But I think I don't think anyone expects the Game Awards to be this perfect sort of um, institution or whatever. It's mostly just a fun show where cool devs can get some, you know, vague recognition. De- all devs deserve some form of recognition, and in the same vein that, like, you know, the the Oscars are this super prestigious thing, like, and like, oh, it's it's art, you know, and and the Grammys and and like music and and gaming is still sort of seen as this obscure child's. thing it's for like some a child's reason. thing right yeah yeah, yeah. and children. it's like it's it's yeah it's really really unfair because building a video game like requires multi-discipline um requires like so much technology and so many teams working in unison i'm not suggesting that building modern movies not complicated i mean obviously movies have a lot of 3d graphics in there too as well now but it's like there's so there's so many more aspects to game development and the complexity and the ongoing business aspects of it that really deserve more respect than I think other creative industries give it, you know. But I don't know, it's it's gradually turning around, you know. We see um we see uh you know Keanu Reeves popping off in 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 Cyberpunk and you know, when you get Hollywood celebrities in these games it kind of does add some credibility to the medium, so it does. It's kind of cool to see. So let's talk about uh, Starfield, right? Let's talk about Starfield. Starfield, Starfield shutting the haters up. Game Pass. Yes. Yeah. Agenda game. The people with the agenda against Game Pass narrative destroyed. Yeah. Question mark. 
narratives destroyed. Yeah, I saw I saw outlets that usually bash Xbox. Well, because actually there's what what is there to say? There, you it. can't really say anything. Ne- I I did see Game Industry Biz. I, I did see like an opinion piece today from them that was like Starfield's a huge success, selling a lot of copies. But is that what Microsoft really wants? Dun dun dun! <laughs> like oh, like you know what I mean? Like oh, so the, it did well, but it sold copies of their games. But I don't know if that. I don't know. It, I was like oh, okay, of course we're gonna twinge it slightly negative, right? So for anybody that doesn't know, uh, MPD put out their their sales report for essentially not called MPD anymore, is it? Sicana, uh, whatever it's called. Uh, they cover the Americas and. You know, there was, there was some hype around this one because Starfield released. People wanted to know how it was going to do. And I don't think Xbox had a number one uh, showing for games in State of Decay 2 uh, all the way back in 2018. Um, State of Decay 2 topped the charts. I did because I beat out God of War that year. That year and people and What? Well, cause it's God of War's second month. I didn't know that. It God of War's second month. Because right, God oh, of War I, came out in April. I do remember that. Yeah, uh, and people were surprised. They were like, "How did State of Decay number one? It's on Game Pass." And that's when, like, you know, Xbox talks about, you know, your games on Game Pass Variety. could essentially sell more. The virality of it, blah 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 blah. It doesn't happen for all games, but it certainly seems like it might happen for Starfield because you know people were maybe expecting Starfield not to do good because it wasn't on PlayStation, and then we got <laughs> the numbers. What was it? They announced five million in essentially a day. Including, yeah. pr- you know, uh, including early access, and then it was like 10 million in two weeks. We haven't had an update since, but we did get September from MPD or Sakana, and Starfield was number one for the month, immediately putting it into the seventh best selling game of this year. So, not only was that the best selling game of September, it was it's the seventh best selling game of all of 2023. Pretty badass, bro. Outselling, you know, stuff like. Final Fantasy 16, which was number 12 for the year, essentially. Which people were like, what? Uh, but people I thought, really thought that Final Fantasy would have sold Starfield when it yeah, didn't Yeah, people. Well, I mean, some people did. Uh, you know, you know PlayStation's got a larger user base, blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, nah, yeah, but the thing with that is, like, Star- Starfield's on PC, too. And PC is huge for Bethesda games. And it came here. I think PC version was uh, the best-selling version, which isn't really a surprise considering I think most of the sales were on Steam where there isn't Game Pass. Where on console, you can buy Starfield, but I feel I feel like most people played it through Game Pass, either just waiting for the release or essentially paying for the $35 upgrade to play it early, right? So mm-hmm. I'm not surprised the PC version sold the most. But I was sort of surprised it was number one because it beat out Mortal Kombat 1. The refresh of the Mortal Kombat series that's on every platform. Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, PC. is yeah, like the biggest fighting game. A f- you know? Fighting game. Still yeah, a fighting game. Mortal bro. Kombat sells ridiculous, Jez. Right? It outsold, you know, the new FC game from... The new soccer game from... Um, EA, yeah. it outsold NBA 2K24 from 2K, which is always a, 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 a perennial seller. So it did well. And then even when you look at a console, because this is where it's like, okay, we people were like, we knew Starfield was going to do well. But even still, it debunked a lot of the myths surrounding Game Pass because people were just like, well, the game can't sell well. It's on Game Pass, and here you have it. It was like, well, it's so good enough to outsell Mortal Kombat, outsell NBA 2K, uh, be number one for the month, but not only number one, but be the seventh best-selling game of the whole year. Like that's impressive, no matter how you slice it. Considering that the majority of console players, you know, can play it for free with their subscription and not have to buy it, right? Mm. So it sort of it sort of quiets a lot of the haters when it comes to, when it comes to uh, the talking points about about Game Pass. <laughs> Um, but as for hardware, which some people were really interested in seeing, like, okay, Xbox has got a huge game, right? Their biggest game since, I mean, we would say, like, Forza Horizon 5, right? So it's their biggest game in two years, but it's also, like, their biggest new IP launch since essentially what would be Gears. And 
uh, it came out that essentially uh, September was the best September month for an Xbox console since 2014 in dollar sales and since 2016 in unit sales in the U.S. So, you know, it sold the, the most units for an Xbox console in seven years. Um, yeah. It's almost as if good games hmm. lead to sales. Good game lead to sales. Is that possible? Like big, not only good games, but also hype games. People were yeah. anticipating Starfield for quite some time, but I do, you know, since we're always trying to be as fair as possible and get all the facts here. So while the game did pretty damn awesome in the U.S., where Microsoft also is the strongest at, guess where Starfield and Xbox console hardware didn't do so well, Jazz? Uh, could it be Europe? Oh, Europe. Uh, in Europe... I want to say Starfield was number two. I could be wrong on that, but hardware sales were down 35%. <laughs> so Starfield That's really shocking. couldn't do anything for console sales. And even in the UK, sales were up like 100%, I think it was, from month to month, but flat year to year in the UK. Mm. So it sort of seems like where Xbox is super strong, Starfield did incredible. People were buying the consoles, but when you move from areas where Xbox is strong to where areas where Xbox is weak, the impact was wasn't as noticeable, I guess you would say. Or non existent. Or non existent in the case of Europe, essentially. Yeah. The Europe situation is really complicated, but this is actually something that ABK can help with, believe it yes. or not. Because I not not just not for the games necessarily, but because of the sales infrastructure. Now, ABK has like a vast sales infrastructure in Europe, and this is like for retail sales, and this dates back all the way to the Guitar Hero days, the Skylanders days, where they needed shelf space for their stuff. And Bobby Kotick is is a, a you know an old school believer in retail, right? So, so yeah, ABK has a large sales force in Europe, but not only do they have a large sales force in Europe, they actually own one of the few wholesale uh, physical disc distributors left in 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 Europe. So like ABK actually like also holds is like has part of the supply chain for printing discs, which I only discovered very very recently. I can't remember the name of the company, but they are an ABK subsidiary. So you know, I think like having the sales force and the the representation to retail. Retail chains that Microsoft probably doesn't even know exists because they're so US centric. I'm talking about things like Media Markt in Germany and stuff like that. Having those relationships in place via ABK could actually have a bigger impact in Europe than actually the games could. Because I've I've heard repeatedly from people that the big issue with Xbox in Europe is the presence or lack thereof of these sales reps. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of impact this has in the, the coming years. But Xbox has a massive hill to climb in Europe. And it's it's a similar similar kind of hill that they've got to climb in Japan. You know, almost as bad. You know, that's well, how bad things have gone for Xbox in Europe. You know, Mr. Mr. Maddie, when we talked about with him on Tuesday, and we talked about, hey, who do you think Xbox picks up after this? He was like, I think they get Sega. Because he made the point that, you know, with your next console, you could sort of brand, you could Sega brand it in Japan. Where, you know, you, what, what if what if you acquire Sega and then the, the next Xbox in Japan is Dreamcast 2? <laughs> you know what I mean? Where I maybe, mean, would they do that though? I'm, I'm just saying, I like, it, it is interesting thought experiment. But yeah, um, it's, it's kind of like how Resident Evil is called Biohazard in yeah, Japan. Yeah, Biohazard right? is in Japan. You know, it's interesting you bring that up because I wanted to bring up the 2023 year-to-date ending top 20 games for... This is just for North America or whatever. Just so you can see where Starfield ranks. These are just, you know, the best-selling games of this year through September, Jez. Mm -hmm. What do you think is number one? What do you think is the best-selling game of the year? Surely it's Call of Duty or something. It's not. Oh, Grand Theft Auto? Mm, Grand Theft Auto? I don't think Grand Theft Auto is even on this list. Yeah, it's not. Oh, really? Yeah. Shit. You're going to have to... Number one best-selling game of the year, Hogwarts Legacy. 
You. Hogwarts Legacy is number one. Number two is Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Although digital sales are included, so I guess there's a chance it could be number one with digital sales included. Number three is Madden. Madden's always big. Number four is Diablo 4. So Diablo doing work. And I know you're you're playing the new season. How's the reception on the new season been for Diablo 4? It's still kind of mixed. Um, I think like there's there's a pretty big disconnect between what people want Diablo to be and what Blizzard expects it to be and what hardcore ARPG fans want it to be. So it's kind of legacy sort of scenario again. Because Diablo is this really great base game with really cool cinematics, really cool story. But the end game is just like killing shitloads of monsters repeatedly over and over again and not doing enough battle aisles, you know. Um, the game has pretty much no business being always online. There's no, there's no like multiplayer interactions unless you're playing with friends. So it's the the game still has problems. However, they have added a lot of stuff and tweaks and feedback uh, that people have asked for. You know, little things, and it feels a lot better to play. And I'm actually quite enjoying it at the moment. But we'll see. We'll see if I get okay. bored of it. So Diablo is number four. Number five is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 from last year. Number six is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And then seven, Starfield. Oh, oh, there's a, there's, a, there's a bit about Jedi Survivor, isn't there? Because they've hired a new gameplay designer, which kind of suggests there's a sequel coming already. I mean, we sort of knew there was a trilogy and yeah, that they were making a new one. It's just that Stig left and he hasn't announced where he's going. So seven was Maybe Starfield. He's going to ABK. Yeah, seven Starfield, eight was Mortal Kombat 1, nine Resident Evil 4. So I was like, Starfield outsold Resident Evil 4. Uh, 10 is, ML- 10 is ML- MLB The Show, which doesn't have Xbox and Switch digital sales included, so that could be a lot higher. 11 is Dead Island 2. 12 is Final Fantasy 16, which behind Dead Island 2... I don't know if that's good for Final Fantasy 16, to be honest with you. Dead Island 2 was a fun game, Why? but... Seriously, what what is going on with Final Fantasy? Like, shouldn't it be... I would have I would have expected it to be bigger than Dead Island. I mean, you would think. I mean, granted, Dead Island came out in April. Final Fantasy came out in June. So it does have an extra couple months of sales. But, I mean, the Final Fantasy name should have easily have put it above Dead Island to me. I I don't know if it's well we we know that the Square CEO obviously I think he's he's walking back the exclusivity stuff that they had with Sony because I'm not necessarily sure it panned out for them. Um, I think that the, they need they need to simul launch these games on PC, man. Yes, they one hundred percent do. If, if you don't have the PC simultaneous launch, you you're vacuuming hype out of your game. There's only like PlayStation exclusive like true Sony games that can like navigate Spider-Man that. 2 essentially. Yeah, and then, but then got, if Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2 but if Spider-Man there. 2 was on PC it'd be a, way bigger as well, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Of course it would, you know. But like Sony wants the hardware sales. Square Enix doesn't get shit from hardware sales. They don't get anything yeah. from Fortnite microtransactions. But they signed so the like, deal though, bro. If- <clears throat> they signed the deal. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I'm not even. I'm not even saying bring Final Fantasy 16 to Xbox because that's not gonna. That's not gonna put a. That's not gonna help them really. Just bring it to PC at the simultaneous launch. I mean, obviously, I want it on Xbox, but like, just being completely real here, it's no. It's no benefit to them to be exclusive but, to PlayStation. Right. No. Xbox. But if it was, if it was on Xbox Day One and PC Day One, the numbers would have been a lot higher. Hell, yeah. if you could get on running on Switch Two. You know, I think the problem is I think the Final Fantasy brand has has basically regressed. While you have well, while you have I other RPGs really seen... like Persona, yeah. like going more to more platforms and and getting bigger. I don't know. It's 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 an interesting. I mean, there's a reason why there's a new right. Square CEO and you know uh, he's changing some things around. Even if they said Final Fantasy met their expectations, but it didn't meet the you know so. I don't know. They but keep, they've, I mean, I could write an essay about what's wrong with Final Fantasy. And, you could, and this is like, as a as a as a long time fan of the franchise, they've kind of wore down the series so much and abused the Final Fantasy brand 
shipping like random crap like strands of paradise and i'm sorry but people i know that people like some of these spin-offs but i'm they're not good enough for the brand you know and like resident evil had this problem as well they had like a million resident evil spin-offs uh, like and over the years and and then like subpar launches like for, uh, resident evil 6 and stuff nearly killed the whole damn brand they had to do something absolutely radical to get it back on track and maybe foreign fantasy needs the same thing you know what i would do rand what i would re remake foreign fantasy 1 and just call it foreign fantasy and start over from the beginning fuck it mm, interesting interesting uh because like right behind final fantasy 16 it's street fighter 6 so final fantasy barely outselling street fighter 6 then ea sports fc then fifa 23 then armored core nice to see armor core up here elden ring from last year is number 17 remnant 2 dead space is number 19 and then mario kart 8 which is like you know super huge still huge right yeah, that came out. That didn't come out this year, did it? No. Yeah, but it's it didn't come out this year. But I mean, it's <laughs> yeah, it it's still still, it's still it's still selling, yeah. right? So, um, yeah, I mean, you get where's super... Microsoft's car game, man? They need one. Oh, we got James. Well, you know, their car game's probably Forza Horizon. <laughs> Enough people uh, crash in that one when you're racing. Uh, James Wise in the super chat says, "Sorry for another super chat. Just forgot to say before, Rand, my girlfriend is a big Brandon Sanderson fan." And she actually showed me there's some concept art for a Mistborn game. Have you seen it? Yeah, I saw some of that concept art. It looks really cool. I wonder if we'll ever get a Mistborn game. It'd be super cool. Raiden Blade, member for 28 months. Guys, did 343i just shadow uh, Battle Royale for Halo Infinite? 12 custom maps. What an end of the year gaming we're having. We bots are eating real good. Um, did they drop? I haven't. I don't know. Battle Royale? I haven't seen that. I um, saw someone's made a battle royale. In oh, Forge someone Mario. made a battle royale. Okay, yeah, they're just the Ford stuff. Uh, Noob, I, don't, I don't know though. Noob Sabat says the smartest and best thing they brought this season is XP earned in custom games. Per perfect for casuals to stay on. I did see that they added that, but I think people were bitching about the cap that you get in custom games or something. Like if you played sixty custom games, you would you would max out, but it's like that seems like quite quite a quite a bit. And Funchito says, what do you think will happen now on PC with Battle.net and the Xbox app? Is Microsoft happy with putting That's all their games question. on Steam? I, I'm sure they're happy with putting their games on Steam. Absolutely. Well, you, you've seen, like, even Blizzard's cap yes. capitulated to Steam. Uh -huh. Di Diablo, Diablo's launched to mixed reviews on, on Steam. Just like Steam Overwatch 2. really hate Blizzard. Just like Overwatch uh. 2 launched to mixed <laughs> reviews on Steam, or negative reviews, right? Yes, indeed. Even though and, uh, the concurrent players were pretty high for Overwatch 2 at the time, right? It's like people were still yeah, playing. Yeah, I mean, I've I've heard like like Overwatch doing record numbers despite everyone being mad at it and Steam's been great for Diablo as well, you know, and <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, it's people hate on Blizzard, but everyone's playing their games. <laughs> the, and I know they earned the hate, man. They earn the hate because I was looking at um, I was looking at uh, they announced a new skin today for Diablo, a new a new horse armor. Funnily enough, new horse armor, hard. new new horse armor. It's Arthas's horse from Warcraft Three, uh, Invincible, also from uh, World of Warcraft as well. You can get it in that too. It's like thirty dollars if you <laughs> you know horse armor for God's sake. So if if I want to make my character look like Arthas from Warcraft Three, which I do. They want me to spend 2,100 platinum on that shit. And it's like, bruh, come on, man. It's just, it's just not, it's not very generous, you know? And I, it's, it's a cool skin. It looks well made, you know? Someone, it looks like someone worked really hard on that skin. It's very detailed. Okay. I'll give them that. But come on, man. It's like, it's like manufactured scarcity because it's, it's not like, it's not like there's a limited amount of, access to this fucking horse armor i don't know capitalism baby yeah and i know people were pissed off with the lily skin and cod right that it was 40 bucks yeah there's a there's a set there's a lily scott uh skin in overwatch too that's similarly priced I've, se I've seen people saying bring back loot boxes 
Yeah, seriously. <laughs> but Lu- we we <laughs> this is this is totally a monkey paw thing. We're all like, oh man, loot boxes suck. They're they're gambling. They're addictive and all this kind of stuff. But like Overwatch's loot boxes really weren't that bad, really. And now it's like now it's like be careful what you wish for. Dude, the <laughs> now fact, you've got thirty dollars skin. The fact that like a little skin in Call of Duty costs forty dollars when a, the brand new Call of Duty costs seventy is mind boggling. You it know is. what I mean? It is. Like that is not priced appropriately. They're they're basically just preying on people's impatience and FOMO or what have you to really want to look and rep your favorite franchise. Like there's no way on God's green earth in the year of our Lord 2023 that a skin should cost 40 bucks, let alone $30 <laughs> or even 20. Like the stuff is priced outrageously. And I think they do it because they know the whales will, will essentially fund it. And I guess you could say, well, the whales are funding the call of duty, like Warzone's free. And you know, when I played Warzone, I didn't spend a single dollar and I had a great time. It was like, well, the, the people who spend money are essentially subsidizing the game for people like me who don't spend any money, you know, oh. and I'm never going to buy a skin. Oh, well, I shouldn't say never. Cause if they come up with some cool ass wheel of time skins, or some cool ass like <laughs> Cosmere skins or something. I might be like, all right, well, maybe I'll buy some. But someone from Activision is probably listening to this, and they're just like, I'm gonna put Wheel of Time shit in that game now. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I was I was looking at the the hell they added Hell um, they added Alucard from Helsing into Call of Duty, and I was looking at that skin. It was a damn good skin. It's <laughs> mm. <laughs> like, oh man, I love that anime. Do I love it enough to buy skin in Call of Duty for? No, I don't play Call of Duty enough. But I've bought. I I admit I have bought a shitload, <clears throat> a shitload of pets in World of Warcraft because they they sell pets in World of Warcraft. Little battle pets. It's literally Pokemon. You you get the battle pets and make them fight each other in turn based combat with the same camera angles as Pokemon. I bought a lot of them, a lot of them, and um. I'm part of the problem, bro. You are part, part of the, the problem. problem. Uh, CJ says, hi, gents. I-, I realized I missed the Patreon payment last month when I switched banks. So there is some money to make up for it. And thank you for the amazing worth- work you both do. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Supernova says, play some Halo now. Picture is sharp and colors are beautiful. Slip space with Pierre Heinz will be in good hands. UE5 can't offer that kind of level of physics. Okay. Brandon mm. says, finally, I'm able to catch you guys live. Well, we're happy you're here with us. Spartan says some of the Halo novels would make for an awesome game in the Halo universe. Great team, go and 343 Guilty Spart taking human ship to a Forerunner planet. Yeah, there's that, a lot of different things they could do for like a Halo game that's not centered around Chief for sure. Uh, Ronnie says PS5 best selling console in September, but how? Because PS5 is the default console people play on. It just they have a lot of stock that's available. They also it's a ritual. It's not so much a ritual. It's just they have a lot of stock. And, and it's a ritual. all the games are on PlayStation 5. And also, like, Spider-Man <clears throat> was coming out. The bundle for Spider-Man released in September. Um, so Looks really good, by the way. Yeah. I- I'm, not, I'm not surprised. And it, it'll be number one in October when Spider-Man 2 comes out as well. So I wish I liked Spider-Man. I mean, I, I think what Xbox fans need to realize, and I've said this before, but... When it comes to brands, PlayStation brand power is is bigger than Xboxes. And when you compare them worldwide, it's no contest. Like here in the States, Xbox and PlayStation are more evenly matched. But when it comes to the rest of the world, it's not even a contest. And that's something that Microsoft has to fix. We talked about Starfield, how it really, really helped uh, here in America by selling consoles, most likely selling Game Pass subscriptions, Starfield, the seventh best selling game of the year. But the further you get away from Microsoft Stronghold, the, the less impact it had. And that's something that they can't change overnight. That's something that you basically, I mean, even when the 360 gen, when Microsoft was number one, the Europe wasn't fully, even fully behind them then. I, I think the PlayStation 3 still sold more in Europe. Play, Europe is just PlayStation Nation and like Nintendo Nation as well. Xbox just has a harder nah, time. Yeah, man. I tell you what the truth is. What's the truth? Europe Europe is PC PC. Well, sure, it's also baby. it's also PC. 
But, you know, X, for Xbox to really make inroads, they got to have more games like Starfield, and the games have to be great. And you'll start seeing more and more people being like, all right, well, I'm going to get an Xbox now, or I'm going to play them on PC, or what have you. Like, it, it all adds, like, this effect that people will just go out and buy the console if there's really cool stuff to play on it. Because right now, <clears throat> for most people, the default console is the PlayStation. That's why most of the reviews you see for most games, when it's a multi-platform, the vast, vast majority of them are on PlayStation because that's where a lot of game journalists, that's their platform of choice. That's their default thing. And that's just what it is. Xbox is more seen as a secondary console. Uh, you know? And that's, I mean, this, this is why, like... I think this is why a lot of people think Microsoft should drop the FIFA multiplayer because that would be the kind of... That would be a culturally culturally relevant event that so it would sort of make Xbox way more attractive. There's a, there's a psychological aspect about paying for multiplayer in Europe, which is why PC is so popular. Like the idea of play, paying for multiplayer in to a lot of people is just total an, anathema. You know, it's it's just like there's just no way. There's no way that would ever happen. So like they don't they don't even, they don't consider PlayStation and they don't consider Xbox because of that. And I think like that would give Xbox a huge edge, but it's also put a huge dent in the in the subsidies that Xbox enjoys. Yeah. So yeah. would it actually happen? I don't know. But uh let's talk yeah. about let's talk about our our, our buddy, the one and only Phil oh. Spencer. He did an interview during uh, Xbox two plus one. It's like, come on, Phil, could have came on our podcast to deliver this news instead of yeah. the official Xbox podcast, which I did see a couple journalists call that out. Oh, interesting. That is the interview that Phil does is with the own official podcast and not with any outlets that could push back. Like, oh, Jesus. Really? Cr- yeah, oh, dude, I saw some of that. Yeah, these, oh, these, wow. these, 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 jur- these San Fran cabal journalists that all, like, <laughs> interesting, the Xbox, you the official podcast to talk about this? Now, come on. <laughs> come on, ours. Oh, my God. It's like, maybe he doesn't want to come on yours because you're fucking clueless when it comes to Xbox half the time. And, like, <laughs> your questions are, hey, Phil, oh, no. uh, I just want to know, is Game Pass sustainable? Because <laughs> I just don't understand how you can make any money, Phil. <laughs> you know what I mean? God, ah, some, of these, I some, of mean these, some of these people, bro. I swear to God. By mm. the way, hit the like button if you're enjoying the show and subscribe. So Phil sat down with Malik Prince and Jeff Rubenstein and Tina Amini uh, in the official Xbox podcast uh, to talk about the ABK deal. And we got some some interesting things from there. Uh, Phil did say that he was about to just head off uh, to visit the ABK studios. In fact, I saw some some uh, tweets today uh, that they were him and I think him and Sarah Bond and and people were essentially chilling with King, which I guess maybe shows you the priority <laughs> of what was most important. Yeah, that's you know? exactly that's the priority, man. They went straight to King. Um. And obviously, King are the the kings of mm. mobile and casual gaming on 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 mobile devices. Indeed, um, a million different versions of Candy Crush, and my God, Candy Crush is. You think the microtransactions in Blizzard games are bad? You ain't played Candy Crush. Man. Well, people expect I was that, that in game for games, two, though, right? No, but dude, like there there are alternatives to Candy Crush that 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 like play exactly the same. They they play and feel almost exactly the same way, but they they they're like maybe they hit you with an ad every like ten minutes or something. Like Candy Crush is just like okay, you played for thirty seconds now, give me five dollars. <laughs> you know, something. It's wild, man. What they what they get away with in that game, and I suppose like Xbox wants to know a little bit about it. I was like I was saying like Xbox has tried, man. They had the Gears Pop thing. Or was a street. They were both terrible, man. Yeah, they were terrible, terrible, terrible games. And um, so I suppose if you know, we can see see what effect King has on, on things. I will say though, I thought that the Halo mobile games, what were they called, Spartan Assault? I actually thought that was really well made. Spartan it just Assault wasn't. Was yeah, yeah. It was. It, it was like yeah, and it wasn't. 
it wasn't egregious with, with its monetization. It was like a premium game, I think. Um, it could have been a yeah. I don't know. It's a little bit f- bland for a mobile game, pro- probably. But yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll find out what happens. I'm just like I'm trying to look at what King does, except for Candy Crush right now. I think and they it, do a couple other things. Yeah. It's 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 all dude. Imagine if they brought Candy Crush to Xbox with some some achievements, bro. <clears throat> Or put achievements yeah. on the mobile phone version or something. They, but either way, they, they did um they did a they did an infinite runner called Crash Bandicoot on the run, which mm. got shut down, sadly. Uh, which kind of sucks. So Phil's visiting King right now, and then he said he's going to be visiting Activision and Blizzard uh, right after that. So going to make a tour of the new studios that Phil uh, just bought and talk to the developers, you know, hear their concerns for the future, what they potentially want to work on. This is where we also got the mention of a call of duty, right? That's one of the things like, Hey, what are you going to do about call of duty? And Phil said, they're not going to weaponize it to make, you know, players of other consoles essentially need to buy an Xbox that there's going to be no exclusive skins or no exclusive uh, betas. And he did sort of kind of say that maybe performance won't be the same across all platforms. Because, I mean, obviously, like, you know, Switch 2 can only do so much or even the OG Switch. (laughs) Um, So um, that's not too much of a shock. Although I do think it would be a mistake not... I'm not saying you need to have exclusive skins because, you know, Fortnite has Master Chief. But if you're on PlayStation, you can get it and use it. I think it would be a mistake if ABK doesn't leverage... Like, you know, Bethesda and Xbox heritage, essentially. Like, there absolutely should be a Halo skin in COD. I mean, if you, if, I guess you could, before you could say no, it doesn't fit with the COD, um, you know, uh, uh, reality or whatever. But I mean, they got skins for Nicki Minaj and Snoop Dogg, not Snoop, Snoop Dogg and, and, Snoop uh, Dogg. Snoop Dogg and, and uh, spawn or what? Like, no, you can throw whatever you want into Call of Duty now. Uh, Lilith. So, I mean, like, yeah, there should be a Master Chief skin, even if it's not exclusive to Xbox. It just be skin that you can purchase. There should be, you know, maybe a, a gear skin. Um, you know, just to like, I, even like when Hellblade Two comes out, there should be like a Senua skin or something. You need to really have some really interesting cross promotional uh, things you can you can do here. You know, um, at least that mm-hmm. to my like, that's what I would be doing. Like, oh man, we have one of the biggest games in the planet. Hey, we have we have Hellblade Two launching soon. Wouldn't it be cool if Senua was a skin? Like, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it doesn't fit. Like, hey, Senua's a, about like mental illness and all that sort of stuff. But we're gonna throw her into you know Call of Duty game or whatever. But there's a lot of there's a lot of cool cross promotional things you could do with it. But they're not gonna weaponize it. Uh, but I think maybe the thing that, uh, most, like, most, uh, like, got the most attention was don't expect any Activision Blizzard titles to hit Game Pass soon. Uh, yeah. when they asked us, like, hey, you know, there, I think it was like Rubenstein, Rubenstein, who was like, hey, you know, there are rumors out there that we're going to do a surprise drop for Game Pass titles. Um, and Phil basically said, no, it's coming in 2024. He said, I would love it if there was some kind of secret celebration drop that's coming in the next couple of weeks, but there's not. Um, there de- Definitely, when we think about the new games that are there, I would be straight with people. If we were going to put them in the description this year, I would tell people. And I know there'll be some disappointment about that. This acquisition is definitely long-term. So the fact that we're not hitting day one with a bunch of games dropping into Game Pass is a little bit of a downer. But I'm very excited about the future, and I just want us to be straight with the people. That's where we are. That's where we are right now. So, yeah, I mean, because how big would it have been for the holiday? You know, with your new ads running, if you had all the old cods in Game Pass, right? Which had had seen a resurgence when when Microsoft fixed the servers and stuff. You could have definitely made something out of that, but. No, because it, Phil basically said because the acquisition went on so long that they didn't have any time to really work with Activision Blizzard uh, because it's not as easy as just flicking a switch to get these games. 
Plus, I would also imagine they'd have to make Windows Store versions of their games as well, which there aren't, right? There's no... Well, I guess you don't wouldn't need to for COD. You could just maybe somehow launch... You'd be like, here's the launcher to Blizz, like to the Battle.net. Well, even, you play even the COD that, games even, or whatever. Yeah, even that was work involved. There. Well, yeah, I'm sure there's work on that. Um, hmm. I, I'm just kind of curious how, how that would go out. But then it started to get me to think, hey, we're going to start doing this in, t- in 2024. And we talked about it before. And we even asked last week, you know, what do you, how do you think they'll drop them? Do you think they'll drop them as one big, huge being like, Bleh, and all, all the Activision games are available? Or will they be like, all right, no, we're going to, we're going to really kind of, I wouldn't, maybe the wrong ter- word to use milk, but we're really going to make it so like 2024 is the year of ABK. Cause I was even thinking you could do stuff like, hey, it's Infinity Ward month on Game Pass. Mm. And you drop like mo- the mo- all the modern warfare games. It's Treyarch month. It's Sledgehammer month. It's Crash month. You know, like you could you could build theme the months. things months out of mm. certain. Because I don't know, like if you want to get the most out of it, if you just dropped all the Call of Duty games on there, that's like too many games. But if you sort of just doled them out, like January, okay, here you go. Here's uh modern warfare and the next month is you know whatever else i I think you could get more engagement like that and there would always be something to look forward to like oh what month what are they going to do with activision blizzard this month you know is this month going to be the back and pat drop you know like i think you i think you can make it more of an event uh like the game pass announcements i I don't know that's just maybe maybe being a bit more optimistic uh, about it but i'm saying that's kind of like there's there's an, there's another aspect to this, right? Which um, a lot of people don't forget, don't consider, and it's something I have to think about from covering the surface beat, you know. And you might be thinking, well, what's surface got to do with this? Well, one of the reasons surface is essentially failed platform is because Microsoft never wanted to compete with its partners, and I think like you're going to see something similar here with Game Pass and all these additions. And it's where it's like Microsoft, like they want partners to be in Game Pass, you know, and you've got a lot of games coming to Game Pass. 11 bit signed this big deal with Game Pass. Paradox, obviously, is in deep with Game Pass and, and these other studios and stuff. It's like, how, how much of a big splash can you make when you've got third parties who are also curated into the service? You don't want to overshadow them. Imagine, like, like imagine they've done deals. But I would I would have assumed that Xbox would have done deals for the all of next year maybe already for Game Pass and um you know that's what 11, the eleven bit deal is we don't even know like some of the games that are coming from eleven bit into Game Pass they've announced like uh, the Alters which looks incredible and they've announced um, Thaumaturge which I played the demo of Steam Next Fest very 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 cool and um. You know, we don't know if these games are coming into the service, and it's kind of like, well, they they will want the spotlight on them when when the games drop into the service. They don't want to they don't want to compete with a, a sledgehammer month or a Treyarch month, do they? No. So I I think like I think it might actually be quite low key the way they stagger out these launches. Personally. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I think. Well, how do you think? Well, I is? think Randall Thor nineteen, the man with the million. Okay, I mean, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Do you fair think? Enough. Do you think as soon as twenty twenty four hits, we get the first drop? Uh, yes. Okay. Oh, um, and I think it'll be. It'll probably be something like Crash. It'll be like, I think that I don't think they'll do these big fanfare themed months. I think they'll just add a couple of games here and there. In amongst the other stuff they add, and it'd probably be like, here's a crash, and here's an old Call of Duty, and stuff like that. I think that'll keep it fairly low key, personally. But I think maybe, uh, let's see, maybe the thing that got the most attention is about utilizing Activision Blizzard's back catalog, because Phil definitely had something to say about that, right? Because we talked about previously, uh, Bobby Kotick about the revival of a guitar guitar hero right and even at the beginning of the show we were talking about what games we would like to see come back 
Uh, you mentioned StarCraft. I mentioned Singularity. Like, they have a huge pool, and Phil said he's 100% behind it. He goes, the amount of franchises that we now have in our portfolio is kind of inspiring. It's daunting. I feel that we have to be a great custodian for the content that we touch. These are memories from people on different platforms, different decades. And I want to make sure that when we're going back and visiting something, that we do it with our complete ability, a motivated team that wants to go work on something and make a difference, not just create something for financial gain or create something for a PR announcement and not deliver on the product. So I'm going to start with the teams and what are they passionate about, and that's why I'm excited to go to these studio visits, and then we'll look at it. I think we've done an A an okay job as Xbox. I don't think we've done an A-plus job on looking at our franchises and revisiting them. It's always a trade-off between what you do that's new and going back and doing something. I do think with Game Pass, we have the ability to maybe pick a couple franchises every year and almost do a revisited. I just made up that term, so it's not a brand. It's not on a box. But, you know, I tease about things like Hexen just because I remember playing it as a kid. I have no plan for that, but I do think when you look across all of the franchises that are part of our teams, there's an opportunity for us to go back even if it's just to recognize the moment and what those things meant in gaming history and do something right with it. Make it available to people through Game Pass. I think there's an opportunity. There's not a plan for that, but there's an opportunity. Um, Phil said he would also be fully supportive of studios revisiting older titles if it was a direction they wanted to take because I think there's just an amazing trove of things that we can go and touch again. But suggested doing so wasn't something that Xbox would mandate. Um, he talked about like Guitar Hero, Tony Hawk, uh, those sort of things. So this got people excited because, you know, there's a lot of, not only is there a lot of like old Xbox, Xbox IP not, not being touched, but there's a whole lot of old Activision IP not touched. And then with Phil saying he'd be a hundred percent behind it. If the teams really wanted to do it, people start like really having these big dreams of franchises coming back and, things of that nature. So I don't know. Do you think any of this, you think this is just like Phil PR where he just says some nice things that never essentially turns out in anything. Or do you think down the road we see, Hey, you know what? Uh, high moon had a really good pitch to bring back Starcraft ghost or something, or Hey, like uh, toys for Bob <clears throat> really wants to work on banjo. Like uh, these sort of scenarios where that wouldn't happen unless they were acquired and it's like okay now you have these studios and you have this ip and it's like the studio wants to work on it uh and they can do you think that's something that will happen in the future jez because i i think it i think it does i think i think i think it will happen absolutely i think i think phil just doesn't lie he's not gonna go out there and say when we're not gonna mandate things and then go go back on that because you know, eventually you'll have some. You'll have a disgruntled ex-employee being like, "Phil said that he wasn't going to mandate us working on this game, but he totally mandated us working on it." So there's literally no point lying. And there's one. There's one thing that. <clears throat> there's one thing that like, PR people say, and it's like you're always on the record. You know, um, it's part of the media media training or whatever. So, um, and uh, so, but yeah. Whether or not, like, some of these scenarios, like Toys for Bob working on Banjo, these sort of dream scenarios that I often see people throw out there, whether these kind of things happen, um, it's anyone's guess, you know. If it was me, I would say probably not, you know. I don't know why Toys for Bob would want to work on a franchise that is nothing to do with them, okay. you know. Um, that you'd have to, you'd have to sort of... I know, Obviously, I don't know everyone at Toys for Bob. I don't know, like... Um, I don't know the people who work at the studio. Maybe it just so happens that everyone at Toys for Bob actually is a massive Banjo fan and that they actually have a pitch already done and this is the thing they've been waiting forever to do. I highly doubt that. I think it's more likely they'd want to work on Crash and want to work on Spyro. And, you know, it kind of reminds me of what Josh Sh Sawyer joked about on Twitter the other day where he was like, he was waiting for Microsoft to call him up and offer a $120 million budget for Pillars of Eternity 3 you know <laughs> and yeah and it's, you know and in a world in a world where you know Baldur's gate blows up like 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 it has i have to wonder like if something if that's something more realistic that could happen but 
I also think like you know, I, there's hard limits on what Microsoft you know, would do. You know, there'd be more. I don't. Th- I don't th- sorry, go on. You know, it'd be more realistic. Not necessarily 120 million dollars for Pillars of Eternity three, but them calling up Josh and being like, "Here's 120 million dollars. Uh, go make Fallout New Vegas 2. Well, that's that's a mandate then, isn't it? Because maybe Josh doesn't want to work on it. But maybe, maybe there was like a tit for tat. Pillars. Maybe yeah. it was like, "Hey, we'll let you work on Pentiment if your next game's something else." You know. Yeah, maybe, you know, I, it's kind of hard with, you know, some of this stuff because there's got to be a hard limit on what would happen. Like, I would love to see a triple A budget, $120 million, Pillars of Eternity 3, the whole team, Obsidian working on it, uh, and make it as good as Baldur's Gate. I would love to see that. Do it in early access as well. And just follow the exact development timeline that Baldur's Gate did. That is a dream scenario for me. But I don't think Microsoft would ever do it. I don't think Microsoft has the balls to do it. I just I really don't. And I think like there's there's still like Phil for when Phil does say we'll talk to the teams about what what they want to do and stuff. I think like if Toys for Bob came with a pitch for a a Crash Bandicoot themed battle royale, I think Microsoft might be like, mm, nah. We're not doing that. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> yeah, so maybe it's more like if you come with us for a pitch for I don't know something that will actually be good, then yeah, we'll do it. You know, but I don't think like you know if if someone came to film as like we want to reboot Blinks the Cat, you know, <laughs> I think Phil would probably say no. And it's like, and then you can you can take that thought process even further. Does does a three D platformer like Banjo even make any sense in twenty twenty three? I highly doubt Psychonauts was a financial success. You know, I I don't think there's a lot of nostalgia for three D platformers and stuff, but I just I just don't think people are that interested in them. You know, they I mean, are like when it's Mar- Mario. Well, I was gonna say Mario gets away with it because it's Mario. You know, Mario's got movies and shit. You know, um, Mario's so it's, one. It's, movie. You're not playing. Well. well no, it doesn't. That's two movies. What I mean, whatever about? you're talking about, how how the how many years in between both? It's still it's still multiple movies. I'm saying a spanning decades. Mario, when you play Mario, you're not playing a 3D platformer. You're playing Mario. The, Mario transcends genres, man. So it's 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 a bit it's a bit different, I would say, with regards to Mario. But like, no nobody looks at Psychonauts and thinks, oh, this this is a Mario like, you know. Like a, like a Souls like or something. They don't think it's a Mario like, do they? Because um, Mario is Mario. It's a it's a inter- institution. It's a ritual. So <clears throat> yeah, I don't think. I think there's limits on. I think people need to probably honestly rein in their expectations with regards to nostalgia. I think some of the stuff that we want to happen is probably just not going to happen. You know. Boo. Uh, Boo. Yeah, boo, yeah, boo, boo, boo me all you want. Boo. boo me all you want, man. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to save you from being disappointed later. You know, you Ryan, you'll be waiting like the banjo bros are gonna be waiting ten years for a game. <laughs> the banjo the banjo bros are gonna be waiting twenty years for a game that's never coming out. Mm. It's well, never no, coming. I mean I want my banjo bros to get their game. But they won't. They won't get that game. They'll never get that game. I'm sorry, Banjo Bros. Unbelievable. I mean, no, you see, I don't know. I, I, I still think there'll be, there'll be stuff. I'm not saying there's going to be a lot of nostalgia trips, but I, I could, you know, I mean, already, I, I, I think they'll bring back Tony Hawk and that would already, that that's a nostalgia trip. Is it not? I don't know. Is, is it... bringing back Guitar Hero not a nostalgia <laughs> trip? I don't know. I mean, that's it's right. I, sat, to be honest, when Kotick was talking about it, it sounded a little bit m- like it was going to be some kind of mobile game. Okay, yeah, sure. How's that work on mobile? Well, you just tap buttons on your screen instead of tapping. Yeah. On your... well, like I, I, this is how this is how I imagine it's going to work, right? And this this isn't this isn't based on any information or leak. This is just how I how it just makes sense for me to work in 2020 it's an app on your phone with the buttons on it you slot the phone into a plastic guitar that has no electric no circuits in it there you go boom and there's microtransactions in the app that connects to the game 
Sounds Thanks. pretty lame if you ask me. Yeah, maybe. But so where are they going to get this bro. guitar? They're going to go buy this guitar from somewhere This that you need to slap it into? Oh, 3D, 3D print it because everybody has a 3D printer at home. No, I mean, Activision will 3D print it and then slap it in a shop or something. You buy it from Amazon for 10, right. 10 bucks. <laughs> um, well, also, uh, Pete Hines has left Beth- Bethesda, Jez. You have any thoughts about uh, him leaving? Is this doom and gloom? And, or doom is and this, gloom! Is this like, think- hey, he's retiring, he made a bunch of money from the acquisition, and he's worked there for 24 years, he's riding off into the sunset after a ship in Starfield? You're going to see a lot of this. You're going to see a lot of it from ABK. You're going to see a lot of it from Bethesda over the next few years. A lot of people who had stock in these companies have made a shitload of money. You know, a, a serious a serious amount of money. And some people love to work. Some people are like genuinely passionate about working and creating and being artists and stuff. And some people are just really good at it from a professional perspective, you know. And like, there's, there's some people be like, I'll be working, you know, till I die or whatever. And that like my, um, my stepdad's father was like 90 and still working. He was a journalist as well, funnily enough. And, um, and, uh, he, he just worked all straight through. He never retired. You know, some people love that shit. Some people don't, you know, <laughs> if I, if I like, if I came into a lot of money, like if I was part of Bethesda or something, or say for example, I, I had stock in Windows Central, right? And I, God, I wish I had stock in Windows Central. So I had stock in Windows Central, and then um, we sold to Future, which which is what happened. And then I made, you know, seven figures or something. I made a shitload of money. Uh, I'd be gone. I'd be fucking gone. Would you baby. still be doing the podcast with me, bro? Oh, I do the podcast. That's not work. Mm. But I wouldn't be writing. I wouldn't be on Twitter anymore. I would be gone, baby. You, I would never. I would never write another article ever again. Wait, you it's consider, you consider to Twitter know. work? Yeah, yes. Yes. Why? God. Cuz cuz it is. How is it not work? I don't know. I thought you said it's super easy cuz every time you tell me, "Rand, you need to tweet more." I'm like, "Eh, you're you mean to tell me that you consider Twitter work?" Yes, it is work. So it's like anytime you post you post the stupid shit you post, you're actually just working. Is that because now you're getting paid yeah. from Elon? So now <laughs> now you're getting a check, so it is work. Uh, well, no, the check's not exactly, the check barely covers my weekly subway bill. Um, but, but, but yeah, no, actually, not my daily subway bill, shit. I uh, do, I spend way too much money on subway. I probably have way more money if I didn't spend so much money on subway. Subway's so good. Man, I wish I could order subway right now, but it's midnight. Why is it so late? I mean, I'm sure what, there's where, probably... Where does the time go? I mean, it's only like eleven fifteen. I'm sure Subway's open. You could order it now and get it delivered, and by that time, no, the podcast dude. will be over. I live in the middle of nowhere, man. Oh, the well, Subway's not open right Subway's now. Subway's open by me. Yeah, because you live in the city. You live in, in Chicago. Yeah, well, I don't. Yeah, Chicago is you know thirty minutes away, it, but yeah. It, when I'm when I'm in England, the McDonald's near my house is twenty four seven because it's it's uh, next to the freeway, so it's open twenty four seven. It's a glorious. Glorious. But yeah, now you I, I know didn't know you, I didn't know you considered Twitter work. I thought you considered Twitter fun, considering how much you post on. There. No, Twitter is not fun at all. It's horrible. Oh, okay. But the podcast. I, mean, I love, I love, I love the people that I meet through Twitter and the nice people. But there's so much, so much, just so much bullshit and drama and trolling and and Elon's just made the platform way worse as well over the last year or two. Every single tweet I put out just. Full of bots. Full of bots. It's awful, man. Worse than it's ever been. So yeah, I'd be off Twitter. I'd be off all social media. I'd come to, I'd do the podcast only and the Patreon and the Discord. I like Discord. Discord's fun. Our little Discord. I love mm-hmm. our Discord. Uh by the way, uh Discord links in the description if you want to join. Yeah. Um But uh but yeah, screw Ryan. Anyway, this was sort of a long roundabout way, sort of saying like <laughs> I don't blame the guy, you know. <laughs> if I yeah. made a bunch of money, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be, you know. And dude's got family, and so much, so much more to the world than just work, you know. So I don't blame him, you know. And there's so much he can do now. I would. He could make a little studio. Or, I or would lo- have looked else. at it. I would have, but Pete Hines always struck me as a Bethesda lifer, just like Todd Howard, right? It's Bethesda mm. or it's nothing. 
I would have looked at it kind of side eyes if like Pete was like, I'm leaving Bethesda and I'm going somewhere else. Right. But he's like, I'm leaving Bethesda and I'm retiring and I'm going to like donate my time and all that sort of stuff. So it's like, okay, he's just done. He's made enough money. He ships Starfield. Like I'm out. Yeah. If he was like, all right, I'm done. And now I'm going to join Nintendo or PlayStation. I'd be like, Hmm. You know, that's yeah, that's a bit dodge. Because, because this, yeah, I ahead. agree with you that he's a lifer. You know, he's a he's a lifer, and and uh, it kind of reminds me of Chris Metzen because you know Chris Metzen sold Blizzard, and he carried on working for years, and then he retired, but now he's back because he's a lifer at Blizzard, and now he's a creative director of Warcraft again. He doesn't need it. He doesn't need to be. He doesn't, he doesn't need the money. He doesn't need to be, but he is. But he is. Yeah. So maybe P. Arn to be back someday. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, dude's a legend and I just, but there, there is this kind of sense that I kind of felt like there, there have been a couple of incidents before the acquisition, even with fallout 76 and, you know, other, other controversies at Bethesda where I kind of got the impression that something had changed for him, I think. And it was since Fallout seventy six. Yeah, that I think it was Fallout. He because he cause he was always sort of really active on social media, and then like Fallout seventy six happened, and uh, yeah, yeah, I think he took a lot of the brunt of that, right? <clears throat> I think yeah, I think um, yeah. Bethesda sort of like Bethesda kind of had a similar a similar visibility cycle to CD Projekt Red, where they were like. I could do no wrong and everyone loved them and you know people calling pulling todd god howard and all this kind of stuff and and that kind of thing and then then came the fall you know they had they had a few years of sort of they they lost their way man i mean there's no other way of, there's no other way of saying it they mm. lost their way and there's they a reason they were for sale right yeah i mean they they put out fallout 76 they put out wolfenstein youngblood and it's sort of it started to feel like they were trying to be they were trying to be Activision, really. And they were trying to find their place in the, in this sort of scary service world, which just wasn't coming natural to them. And they had this whole campaign. Do you remember the Save, Save Player, Player One? One campaign? And they they were criticized so much for um all of a sudden all their games are multiplayer now. You know? And then like the the horse armor thing, and people started blaming Bethesda for the rise of microtransactions and then Fallout Shelter and they started making mob they're making mobile games now and all this kind of stuff. Um they, they announced Fallout Shelter in a much better way than Blizzard announced Diablo Immortal. Because like where Blizzard was like, this is what you're getting instead of Diablo 4. At least at least Bethesda had the presence of mind to be like, okay, there's a there's a mobile game and there's a new mainstream well, game. Yeah, so that's exactly how that. uh how Coalition <laughs> announced the gears gears pop game was like here's the gears pop game but then also here's a gears tactic game and here's gears five yeah that's that's how we, that's how you that's how you should do it i suppose but but yeah i don't know i don't think i don't think it's a it's a bad thing necessarily and this it's the thing yeah. people retire you know people churn we've got a new ceo of future as well yeah who who's, who actually who's actually like really awesome it seems better than the previous ceo so it could actually be a good thing maybe maybe yeah, people Pete are gonna, is great but maybe someone even better you're gonna like, see a lot of people who made a lot of money leave and then go build their own studios that's always happens out of out of things like this right so uh did you um did you see what bobby kurtick said he's gonna do now with his with his riches what do you say he's gonna bury it he's gonna he's gonna become a philanthropist like uh, oh. Bill, bill gates Interesting. Okay. Which means he's gonna buy buy up a load of farmland, and then he's gonna put microchips in a vaccine. No! I <laughs> <laughs> oh, just got your shit demonetized. <laughs> uh, damn you, Jess. But anyways, <laughs> let's uh let's head on to the to some Patreon questions, shall we? And then <clears throat> have a nice uh send off into the weekend. So if you guys yes. join the show, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. We have wonderful people at patreon.com slash XB2 hitting us with questions so you can join as well. Get access to Xbox 2 plus 1 and Xbox Ultimate when we do those as well as like shout outs and the Q&A thread. So we have Sith Lord. He says, what is with this rumor of Microsoft is buying Paramount IPs? 
<laughs> do you see that i think i sent this to you yeah and i uh, was just like no yeah no I, I don't know. Like that's I saw true. Tom Henderson complaining about games leaks and rumors Reddit and how that's anything's flying. Like some dude just posted Microsoft's basically in the final stages of requiring the Paramount IPs. And I'm just like, why? <laughs> like What even what? is Paramount's IPs? I don't know. Star Trek, I guess. I, I but it's just like what? Like people believe but then there are people who like legit believe it. Like, really? That's amazing. And it's like What? No. Right. Now then, I, I would be shocked. Like if this ended up being true, I will b- legit be shocked because I just, I just think there's no way. It's not true. It's not Come true. On. Yeah, they've got more IPs than they know what to do. Exactly. With right now. Microsoft and Activision, like with all the everything they own now, they have so many IPs. Like they wouldn't need Paramount. I don't know. Raj. He says, word on the street is that EA is looking to be sold. Disney was apparently approached, but Bob Iger, their CEO, is non-committal. Who else do you think is a good fit to buy EA? I think EA is going to get sold at some point. It's just a matter to who. I think... Comcast. Comcast. <laughs> Amazon. E- no, I'm, no Amazon. Please. I'm just saying, wasn't... Wasn't the reporting... There was a report that Amazon was... like, Remember? Like It was like, oh, Amazon's oh, yeah. buying remember, EA. Yeah. And then it was like, that's not true. And then there's like, oh, NBC Universal, Comcast almost bought them, but I think they wanted to like leave the current EA CEO as like the CEO, and like that didn't go through, so that fell through. And like, yeah, they're like, what are we doing with Disney, Bob Iger? Because he's under a lot of fire. It's like, well, let's let's get really back in. Instead of being a licensor, let's just get being big in game development. So like, you should buy EA. So I Bob really Iger. Bob Iger did leave. And then Chapek came in, but then Chapek destroyed everything. And the, the stockholders wanted Bob Iger back, so Bob Iger, I, Iger came back. But he came back without a plan. And the MCU's failing, and Disney Plus is losing money, and their parks aren't making as much money. So like Disney's on fire right now because he came is back really? without a plan. Yeah, Disney not, didn't not doing so good. Damn, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I think EA gets sold at some point. The question it's it'll be to a big media conglomerate. I don't think Apple. Maybe I don't think you'd see a Nintendo, Xbox, or PlayStation get them. Uh, but I think somebody will. Mm. Uh, Nate Miller says, "I'm assuming you both listened to Phil's interview on the official Xbox podcast this week. Why is it even? Yep. Why is it even when he speaks plainly and clearly, people think he's still doing marketing speak? He clearly said no ABK and Game Pass until 2024. Lol." Hope you two are doing wonderful, wonderfully as we head into the holidays. It's because, you know, people view as personal as Phil is, they still view him as, hey, he's CEOs and CEOs still do PR. So everything he says is PR, right? Um, and there are just some people that don't like him. There are some people that don't like the whole, hey, when everybody plays, we all win. Right when you're doing that stuff, but you're you're not putting Starfield on Star- PlayStation. Like there are some, th- like there are some people that that really bothers. Like those sort of PR statements that they always say, and then it's like, well, why not this? Like, yeah, it's it's kind of like Microsoft doesn't want to be seen as compete as a, a nasty mean competitor or something, while also competing. But then, I I, I do I do get that. And one of the things that, like, I was thinking, like, when we were just, I didn't, I didn't, I forgot to mention this. And I think, in fact, that's when I lost my trial of thought, I think. Okay. I was, I was sort of like, I wish their marketing was a bit edgier. Mm. It's so, it's so soft, man. And I don't, I don't know if that's, I would presume they know better than me. And I'm speaking about what would appeal to me at the end of the day. And I know there's marketing where, like, there's marketing research where it's like people don't like it if you're nasty the competition and they in those situations they tend to side with the competition and it's funny because like british supermarkets do that all the time and they'll call out rival supermarkets in their ads and be like oh we're cheaper than this supermarket and stuff like that and uh (laughs) and and i call them out and um but yeah i don't know i kind of wish xbox marketing was a bit edgier and when when Phil does say things like, 
you know, when we all play, we all win and stuff. And it'll never, and, and like, we don't want to weaponize Call of Duty and that kind of thing. It's like, well, why compete with PlayStation at all? You know, why not just, you know, put all your stuff onto PlayStation and become a publisher? You know, there, there's that genuine argument to be had. And I, I don't know if Phil's ever really talked about I mean he said why... on the giant bomb he's just like well you're not a third party publisher right yeah but why not as he says explain why I mean because yeah. because the money is all in owning the ecosystem bro not publishing your publishing your game unless you want to be Tencent you know why not be Tencent yeah well I mean they're not Tencent though mm, not yet yeah I don't know I think it's more just Phil's CEO, so a lot of a lot of people just view it as what he's saying is just PR, right? Some people are just footing it as well, and yeah, they don't they don't really think believe the things they're saying, but they have to say certain things to keep their engagement up. Uh, Silas says, "Happy Friday, Rand, and the engaged one, huh? Why do the oh. hardcore gaming community, people like Rand, for the most part, ignore or mock Nintendo? What? Who me?" Me? <laughs> Ignore oh, Ran- Nintendo? Ran- Excuse me? Old out. Oh my lord, old Silas. Out. I thought you were a buddy, jeez. This family-friendly label they have, I feel, is a disservice to their technical and development prowess. I felt more creativity and gameplay excellence from four levels in Mario Wonder than I have in the ten hours I've spent in Spider-Man 2 or any of the PlayStation Studio games. The open-ended gameplay oh. and physics of Tears of the Kingdom opens up a level... <laughs> A player agency and channels that I feel is unmatched. I know they get this. High, I know they get the high scores and sales, but most of their games are challenging, have tight control schemes, and would seem to fit hardcore gamers. I mean, I there there are plenty of hardcore games. Yeah, there are Nintendo hardcore gamers that, that hardcore, love Nintendo. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I think you you just need to find the right communities, man. Like, there's a lot of overlap between like. Hardcore Souls players, and then what? you know, people like pe- like the- there is like so- Souls like s- sort of come from that like, classic Super Nintendo tradition where games are just absurdly hard, you know, from back in the day. Nintendo does make these games that are like quite accessible, but also have like a a bite to them, like a kick, right? Sometimes, especially the Zelda games. Like when I was a kid, like. The Majora's Mask was brutally difficult, you know. Um, I found it difficult anyway, without a guide. Like, I'm playing like Super Super Metroid, trying to navigate that place without a guide. Also, like, what the fuck, man? Um, but yeah, I I think there's plenty there's plenty of hardcore games that do like Nintendo. And if you're, I think maybe he's subtweeting you. And of course, of he, course, he is. He doesn't. He doesn't think you give Nintendo. The props they deserve. Of course I don't. But I mean, <laughs> I, I play that up. Like, dude, I just... I, I, I don't... I, I don't mean it when I mock Nintendo. That's just a rile... Like, I don't... Nintendo just doesn't do it for me. I, I, whatever. Like, you know, when people... It's just... They just... And maybe that's on me. Maybe if I, if I actually went and loaded up my Switch and played some of their more of their games or whatever it would it would speak to me but they just it just doesn't interest me you know uh spider-man 2 interests me a lot more a way. lot more than super mario wonder that's just i mean you can maybe you can say that says a lot about me that like oh you'd rather play spider-man 2 than play super mario wonder but it's the truth and i'm not saying super mario wonder is bad i know that little joke with nick where i said it was like super mario Bros. 3 from 1989 <clears throat> but it's just that's my that's kind of what I'm interested in, you know. Uh, I want to I mean, feel immersed when I play games, and Nintendo. I don't find Nintendo's games to be super immersive, personally. Like, and I mean that from like a role playing kind of perspective, you know. Um, but again, that's a me. That's a me problem. It's not to say that they're bad or anything. I don't know. I mean. It very well could be I could get Super Mario Wonder and play it and, like, fall in love. Because it's been a long time since I... I mean, I played... I started Super Mario... Oh, gee, what was the Switch game? Super Mario... Uh, the one with the hat. 
on the cover. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was the What was the name of that one? What was the name of the last Mario game? 3D Mario I game. I don't remember. God, I can't. I can't even remember. Um. Super Mario hat? No, it wasn't called Super Mario hat. <laughs> Super Mario. I mean, he had a hat, and in, like the cover, he's like throwing it at something. I'm just trying I to. I can't think remember. Was it, was it, it wasn't very su- was it Super Mario Switch? No, that's not no. It was Super Mario. Um... Galaxy. No, Galaxy the was one. the Wii games. Okay, we got X starts and yeah, Odyssey it was Odyssey. There we go. Odyssey, right? I sure. just, I could not remember the name of the game for the life of me at all. Yeah, me neither. And I, d- I did play Odyssey for a couple hours, and I put it down. I don't know, I don't know why I did. I just wasn't, wasn't feeling it. Maybe I don't know. But I mean, the Switch is like my third system, which barely gets any use. <laughs> <clears throat> You're a malice. You finished really? Metroid Dread, though, didn't you? And I didn't play Metroid Dread. Oh man, I re- I was really enjoying Metroid Dread, and then so I tried by work. See, I've got even less excuse to play Nintendo Switch because I don't review Switch games, so my Switch is just never getting a look in. I did, however, put like 250 hours into Pokemon Sword and Shield. I mean, that that is like the last Switch game I played. I think you ruined Switch for me by making me play that god-awful Pokemon game. <laughs> you ruined me, bro. I would have I played more Nintendo games, but you ruined me because I, oh, yeah, I just remember me, me. I remember Pokemon. I don't know. Maybe I'll play Super Mario Wonder. I mean, I saw the reviews. It's great, but Mario games always get great reviews. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It is it is interesting. Like I I can't really put my finger on why Nintendo doesn't appeal to me that much. I don't know. I like Metroid, but that's about it. Yeah. Don't care for Zelda. Don't care for Mario, really. Uh we have a question from Lazar Wolf. What which is your favorite? Burritos or tacos? <clears throat> Burritos, uh, personally. Case, quesadillas. Oh, yeah. Quesadillas. Quesadillas. Is if we're yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah. But if I had to go burritos or tacos, probably burritos. Yeah. Yeah, I go burrito. But it's funny. Easy, when easy. I If I order a burrito, it's like no cream, <laughs> no sour cream. Uh, um, you know, I, I just want like the steak. Uh, depending on the place, the beans because some some beans aren't good. The cheese, all beans are good, bro. And sometimes, like not the lettuce. Like I, so just give me a just give me a burrito just packed with meat and cheese. <laughs> you know, and sometimes they'll order like extra. Like there's a place around me that's order and it's like they'll put rice into it, rice in it, in it, which is actually really good. But yeah, quesadillas. There's actually um, there's actually a Mexican street food vendor in my town in northern england and they do really good rice meat and cheese burritos <laughs> maybe you'd like it i hate i absolutely hate sour cream i always i always make sure it's like i've ordered stuff from places and if it has like sour cream on there i'll just be like i don't want this anybody want it like even if i'd like wipe it oh off gosh. i'm like i can still taste taste it a little bit i'm like it's disgusting you're like a child man i know just eat when, it. when it comes with sour cream absolutely Ugh. just eat it I can I can eat I can eat anything if it's just like there in front of me. Uh, yeah. Batman Beyond says, "Hey guys, what non-exclusive games are you looking forward to the most in 2024?" For me, Metal Gear Solid Three Remake is that next year? Do we know if that's next year? Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean maybe. Oh uh, man, GTA I'm like, Six. I'm so cautious about that. GTA Six, hopefully. Suicide Squad, Assassin's Creed Japan. Star Wars Outlaws is definitely 2025. Well, out of that that list, I mean GTA 6. I love GTA 5 a lot. Uh, Suicide Squad. I mean, I, I Rocksteady's one one of my all time favorite devs. Is it just out of this list? I mean, he, well, I guess he's given us his list for non exclusive, okay. and I was going off that. But I mean, if you got a game that you th- know is coming 2024 that you're super excited, and he said non exclusive because I would have put up Hellblade 2 for mine, right? I'm not even really sure what is even coming out next year at this point. I've, we've got a big list of Windows Central upcoming games, and it's we work really hard curating that. And it does have all the games sorted by year and shit, so you can you can go and have a look there. But um, I'm really excited for the thing that comes to the top of my mind. I'm sure there's other stuff I'm forgetting, but I'm really interested in 11-bit Slate. Like the mm. I've, and I've played some of it. I played 
Frostpunk to... Oh, actually, am I allowed to say that? Yeah, I might still be under embargo. <laughs> I can't remember if I'm under embargo or not. Okay, well, I, I know about Frostpunk 2, and I've played the Alters, and I've played the Thaumaturge as well, and they're all great, you know. Uh, obviously, they're not finished yet, but I was just sort of like 11 bits stepping up, man, to the next level. So I'm really excited about everything 11 bits doing. I don't know if they're all coming out in 2024, but if they are, they're going to have a really good year, I think. I mean, I guess one of the games I'm looking forward to early next year is the new Prince of Persia game. I think that I, oh, the yeah. trailers and that stuff look really damn cool. Um, Silk Song is next year. I mean, we, we assume unless it gets delayed again, and I loved Hollow Knight. Uh, Jez, I'm surprised you didn't say this, because even for me, even though I didn't finish the first one, Final <clears> Fantasy <throat> VII Rebirth. Oh, is that next year? That's twenty. That's oh, February yeah, 29th. Dude, you need to finish. Like, we talk about not finishing games. That's one game you should finish that I have finished. Yeah, I know. I should, shouldn't I? It's so, so good. Elden Ring. I, I know Elden I bitched Ring's... about the ending, but it doesn't. the ending is such a small part of it. It doesn't matter. Elden Ring is getting DLC. I'm sure that'll be a lot of fun. But yeah, I'm like looking at a list here and we only know stuff for January, February, March. Everything else is like to be determined. So who knows, essentially. Diablo expansion should drop next year. They just said they're doing an expansion every year. Yeah. So. Uh, SJ Dub says, good day, Ran and Jez. Halo Infinite Season 5 is here and it's their best one yet. I'm excited for the return of Firefight later in the season. I just miss not having more campaign stories. Speaking of which... Is there any real validity to the rumor that started on Hoglog podcast Bitcast? It's funny, Hoglog people call Bitcast Hoglog's podcast, like they call this podcast Jez's podcast. You know, <laughs> I think that's hilarious. About the new Halo campaign being in development, I want nothing more than another Halo campaign. But this surprised me since most of 343's campaign team was let go earlier this year. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that 343 is the one making the campaign, does it? Just means that a yeah. campaign's in development. Uh, Ainsley, you know, I think Ainsley's pretty reliable. Uh, I think he has a lot of really good Halo 343 sources in general. So, yeah, I believe him. I, I can totally see Halo's next campaign being in development, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I need to find out. Did he say sequel or did he mean campaign DLC for your boy, Halo Infinite? Because I, I don't know. Um, it was funny because at the, the Halo World Championship, um, the winner was like, basically was given a speech or one of the winners. And he was like, uh, by the way, yeah, I'm really loving Halo Infinite. I'm really looking forward to you guys putting out some campaign DLC, hopefully in the future. And then Sketch was just like, I'm going to cut you off right there. Uh, uh -huh. thanks for that. And I thought, wow, that's, that was kind of bitchy actually. <laughs> so like, um... I don't know. I would presume the dudes there that know if there's campaign DLC coming or not, but they need to do it, man. I'm sorry. They left that story in a mess, bro. Mm. What what the fuck are the endless? Like, I feel like I'm comp I'm back where I was with Halo 4, where there's, there's some new faction that I don't care about that just makes me disengage and turns my brain off. Just bring the fucking flood back. The Banished are fine. The Banished are fine because they're basically the Red Covenant. I can understand that. But why are they resisting bringing the Flood back so much? I don't get it. Don't care about Prometheans or whatever they're called. Don't care about the Endless. Don't know who they are. Don't care. Great. I'm, well, I I'm really happy for you I think you have story guys. reasons for bringing the Flood back, right? And you beat Gravemind. So well, you'd, you'd have to no, find no, no. somewhere on, where like, the Flood is, you know, where the Flood would be, right? They're on an installation with flood specimens, I thought. Something. I yeah. really thought they were setting up the flood's return. I mean, I mean so did we, I. Co we, 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 can't, we can't have killed every single polyp in the universe. Surely. I mean, they can bring it I back if they want, but maybe they thought the Endless was a better villain, but we'll see if we ever find it out. It isn't. It isn't a better villain. Mm. They need to stop with this resisting the flood. Halo. So you're, you're Halo, essentially saying Halo, Halo, Halo was, is Covenant or brutes versus covenant the enemies are the covenant or the brutes 
or the banished essentially and the flood right as your as your as your enemy factions halo was best when it had horror levels like halo 4 had no horror levels in it and it was lame but like all the other halo games had these absolutely terrifying levels full of zombie plant monster things and yeah i realize you know i'm a very very casual halo fan here but halo had that sort of edge like there was some halo levels back in the day that were like super dark you had to use your torch and stuff and i kind of viewed it through that lens man the flood were terrifying i don't give a fuck about these little robot light hard light yeah i mean I don't, yeah I don't, I don't really care about those either i don't know why they did that i don't know why they did that did they think they were gonna did, were they trying to go for a broader audience or something did they think the flood were too scary i don't know I, like what the fuck Pisses uh, me off, bro. Billy the Brewer, he says, Rog Ally or Legion Go, which should I invest in as a mobile Game Pass platform? Jazz, really Ooh. quickly, which one? Oh, that's tough, man. Like, the, the Legion Go isn't out yet, so we haven't really got proper reviews of it. We don't know if it overheats or explodes or if there's some kind of big issue with it. So I'd honestly just say, wait for the reviews before you commit. The Legion Go has some cool features like a kickstand and detachable joysticks and stuff. But the ROG ally is super light, and it has variable refresh rates, which which the Legion Go does not have. So there are pros and cons to both. But I would say wait for reviews and wait for more detailed comparisons from tech YouTubers. I'm sure there'll be some really great ones out there. Yeah. Trickstar for Trey says, what does your dream game look like for you too? Mine would be an exploration type game where I could build a Fort Castle Town third person and have it be populated by NPCs and players while also being able to command an army to conquer, or a better version of PS3's mag. Hmm. See, me... I a lot of people dream games, and, I don't and know. just no one's ever made it for some reason. The thing is, like, I like it when other when, when someone's telling a story to me. So that's one of the reasons why I don't like... Like, I never really got into Minecraft or some of the other stuff, because I don't like creating my own story, because I feel like somebody else could create the story better than I could ever do. So that's why, you know, when the games, that's why I'm looking forward to like Spider-Man or Alan Wake 2 or Hellblade 2 because it's these creative, you know, people creating a story for me to experience. Just in the same way, like I love reading books. Like I like when you have these super smart creative entities, authors, the game designers basically build you a game or uh, a movie or a book from the ground up that you can experience and run through all the emotions of like happiness, joy, anger, sadness, amazement. Like, you know what I mean? So I, I get yeah, that. Like, okay. dream game. Like, I remember I asked Phil in 2015, I'm like, I want Alan Wake 2. And, you know, we were finally getting Alan Wake 2. I get, so I was like, I want Alan Wake 2 and it's finally coming. I'm like, I'm really excited for that. So. I don't know. When people ask, like, what's your dream game? It's like, I sort of feel like I'm getting it most of the time because I'm getting these games from world-class developers that are taking me on a journey. Uh, and that's all I really want, essentially, I guess. Mm. <clears throat> um, My dream game is probably World of Warcraft with modern graphics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, we have good old Collinwood. Good day, Ran and Jez. So it looks like Season 5 Halo Infinite is going to be a big success. It's gotten a lot of praise from the Halo community and bringing back old fans who left the poor state of the game a year or so ago. Now, before the Summer Showcase, you predicted what might be shown at the two presentations Xbox put on. At the time, you said Halo won't be shown. It was there was nothing to show and would be better for Halo to take a low profile until there was something that would be huge and new, something like the rumored Battle Royale. So with the positive reaction to Season 5, is that moment now? That's an interesting question. That is a good question. It's, it's a good shout, remembering that we said that. Yeah. Because um, I completely forgotten, frankly. But I think, like, I think Halo's earning its place back in the spotlight, I think, to some degree. And I think, like, if there is a big campaign DLC that they're working on with, you know, Master Chief and with story elements and a new biome, like... Honestly, that you've got you've got the game, you've got the system in place. I think it's I think with with the fact that the they've gotten the the multiplayer back on track now, I really think they should make at least a couple of 
meaty campaign DLCs for for the game to flesh out the story and set up the set up the scene for the next Halo game. Um, so yeah, I do think the time is now if it really does exist. And I think they should do it. I think they should fully redeem Halo Infinite before they start thinking about a sequel. I really think they should do that. But... I could, I could see, I could see Halo being at this year's showcase. Absolutely. Like if the, because see, this season's like three months. <clears throat> or this season's just started. So let's say the next season's three months or four. Season six would be early next year. Uh, you know, and then if the can posit- if the momentum is continues and it keeps on growing and growing and there's a new season that they could essentially put up with uh you know the tie-in with the showcase somehow yeah i could see halo showing up again at at it i mean it it basically showed up uh until the game was out and then hasn't appeared again so i guess it i guess it all depends on the synergies of uh when something it's like okay do we have something to show and at the time like halo infinite was sort of down in the dumps and people didn't want to hear about it but now that like people are coming back and talking positive about it and that continues to get momentum yeah they could easily be like here's season nine and what's coming for halo infinite and like a tease of some something like like campaign related yeah they could they could totally do that this this year might be the year uh, let's see what else we got. We have... Uh, oh, actually, just to dovetail that, what, isn't there supposed to be a new season of the TV show? Yes, new. I think that's next year, 2024. So, let's assume that the ne- the next season of the TV show is also, like, good, and they took the feedback <laughs> on board, and like, <laughs> I know you're laughing, but let's just, ima- let's just imagine for the sport experiment. Wouldn't that be so nice? If they they managed to get the multiplayer working again, they got the TV show sort of like in a good place, sort of appealing to fans new and old alike. I don't know how you pull that off, but clearly it's possible. Like what the One Piece show, I wouldn't have expected that to have gotten critical acclaim and even fans on board, but they did. Um, If they can do that and um, keep the live service going well, and then announce campaign DLC. It'd be such a great redemption story for Halo. Like, I just really want to see it. Similarly to how like um, Cyberpunk Edge Runners really started the Cyberpunk redemption arc as well. I would think. Yeah. No, you're right. Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, we have Johnny Six. He says, "Now that Xbox owns the ABK, do you think Xbox will have to pay Sony for the crossplay tax?" Hmm. I was wondering yes. about that myself. You think they they will still have to? They still have to pay. Like, why wouldn't they? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, if it's in the contracts that Activision signed before for that stuff. Yeah, yeah I, it, probably. I, I mean, Xbox isn't gonna like refuse to pay and then be like to the public, we re- refuse to pay the crossplay tax. So PlayStation deleted Call of Duty from from the system. Go blame them not going to happen i think it's at the end of the day it's sony's platform they dictate the rules microsoft has to play by those rules you know and um and i think they will i think they'll continue playing the paying the crossplay tax as long as it exists the 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 only way that the crossplay tax stops existing is if xbox can get console install base to a similar level to playstation but that's probably not going to happen i don't know, I'm even sure the console install base it would just be the the total users right mm. playing it or whatever because isn't it like proportionate where it's like oh we have we have the most people playing it on our platform so if more people spend it on xbox then you have to pay it back but if it was more people are playing on xbox then mm. there wouldn't be any maybe uh same scum goblin says hey red and sleepy jazz i would really hate for phil to be caught in another lie but correct me if i'm wrong he promised that Baldur's, Baldur's Gate 3 would be on Xbox by the end of 2023. With us, with us only having two months left with no news, not even a PO listing, do you think we'll see it come this year? Did Phil say I, that? Because I could also have sworn Larian said that as well, didn't they? Well, I I don't know if Phil said it. Um, I think Larian said it. I mean, I know Larian. I think they said it would come. Yeah, they said it would come this year. 
So yeah, they did. They they said it would come this year, but I mean, development is complicated. So at the end of the day, like when when they say something's going to happen, it's kind of incumbent on the idea that nothing goes wrong. And I think like they did they did say that they're gonna bend the rules with regards to parity for the Series S here in this instance. But there's all sorts of other, you know, considerations to be made. You know, Larian's sort of working through a huge bug list as well on the on the, the game as exists right now. And I suppose, um, you know, maybe that could be playing into things. I don't think the Xbox version is just, I don't think it's much of a high priority for them. They probably realize it's not going to sell that well on Xbox. You know, everyone, I mean, I'm not going to buy it twice, I don't think. Um, I got it on PC. My saves are on PC, and I presume a lot. Most people who wanted to play it probably did play it on PC already. But yeah, I guess well, we'll I find mean, out. I think it's just more like Phil said it's coming this year because they told him it it could come this year. And I've always maintained that the best time to release that game would be right around <laughs> either the nominations are out and Baldur's Gate has 15 nominations and like now play it on Xbox or it wins game of the year and it's like now play it on Xbox. Either way, I think the game's going to come November or December uh, to tie oh, yeah. in with the nominations for the Game Awards. Do um, you think Baldur's Gate wins game of the year? Yes. Me too. Governor Grimm says, I mentioned in a previous episode that I don't think Sony would be dropping prices for the PS5. Said my concern for a PS5 Pro is price. Now that we see the new PS5 Slim... The minor price increase. What do you think the PS5 Pro will cost? Assuming we did it, talk about it, but yeah, yeah, assuming they don't drop the price of the, the stuff. But right now, I'm assuming it's going to be at least 600, and we'll see how that goes. Logan, he says, "Hey, I'll hope everything is well." With Night Dive interested in doing Hex, Hexen, and Heretic, how long you reckon till they work something out with the Xbox? They are literally perfect choice to do this tax. I mean, I think I think they'll probably. I think that could bring them on board to remaster the classic ones. I don't think they'll use them to make the new ones. That yeah. has to be it. That has to be it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I could totally see them remastering the classic ones. I, I think um, I, I think it's one of those... I'm not saying it's one of those things that happens right away, but I think it's something that will happen at some point. Yeah, I think so too. Omen says, would you rather have Xbox drop all their ABK back catalog and a Game Pass all at once or sp- space it out over a year or two? Well, I guess for me it doesn't matter because I own most of the stuff. It's really just a matter of the people on Game Pass. Personally, I can see I can see uh, explanations and reasons <clears throat> for doing both. But I think they learned from what they did with Bethesda where they dropped it all at once and then had didn't have a lot for the rest of the year or, or rough patches where now you can kind of, all right, we saw what that did for Bethesda. Let's, let's, let's string this out. Uh, Cause you never know games might get delayed. You know, you might be expecting a big game pass title, but then that, you know, like city skylines was supposed to launch this upcoming week on Xbox, but guess what? It's not. <laughs> so there goes oh, the big, have you- have you seen all the drama about that yeah, game? Yeah, about how like the performance isn't up to par or whatever, or something like that. So, like, Paradox has really shit the bed recently. Like, I I don't know what's going on with them. Yeah. They've sort of they they sent Lamplighters out to die without any marketing whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Like m- most people, you can't really look at Lamplighters and know what it is. You know, there needs to be some marketing effort behind it. And um, <clears throat> I sent that game out to die and got it to the studio and then basically fired the studio. Said like, okay, yeah. you guys, are, you guys, you know, we've, we're divesting from you or whatever. And um, now they've, they admitted that City Skylines isn't finished, mm-hmm. but they shipped it anyway. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, the reviews haven't been great. I think it's, it's in the seventies right now on Metacritic and stuff. And, um, and it's funny because this this is what killed Sim City. <laughs> I was thinking, like, City Skylines rose from the ashes of Sim City, um, Sim City Online, which was a similar mess, and launched unfinished and unready. And then City Skylines came out, and then it was like, oh wow, th- now this is this is the Sim City that we actually wanted. So like, EA killed the whole Sim City franchise by releasing it early. 
City Skyline's picked up the slack, and now Paradox has basically become the enemy. They become what they swore to destroy. Around, mm. what's the deal with that? I don't know, but <clears throat> we got like uh, ten minutes left before we gotta get out of here. So we got a couple more questions. Uh, Achievement says, "Do you think Xbox could take Tango from Bethesda and put him under Xbox Game Studios, since Xbox seems to want to work more with Tango directly?" No. No. Nope. I think the studios will stay exactly where they're at. I don't think you'll. I don't think they're gonna move it to under Matt Booty. I think Matt Booty can, you know, work with them, but no, they're not gonna move any of them. Uh, go cheese. Hey guys, I was thinking for when they add Activision Blizzard games to Game Pass, they should do it by studio. That way they can celebrate each studio's history and give them a chance to shine. Yeah, that could be a way to do it. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, I think I was saying earlier that like it could overshadow partner games, but if they have like a really quiet month, I think it would make sense to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mythic Marty says, hey, Jez and Rand, keep... Keen to get your insights on what's going on with mid-gen pricing, seeing as the PS5 Slim Digital has somehow gone up in price and the disc version stayed the same price. How can we expect the PS5 Pro for anything less than six fifty next year, which would be close to double the PS5 the PS4 Pro was at launch? Similarly, why does Xbox want to phase out the cheaper 500 gig Series S in favor of holding the three hundred dollar price point? Isn't the whole idea of a Series S to hover up the value in price conscious consumer? Get that shit to down to two hundred. Have a good one, lads. I mean, shit's just really expensive, bro. And I don't know. Because the Series S did get pretty low last year, and it didn't really do anything. So maybe they feel that $300 Series S with more storage is more valuable than $200 Series S. But also, maybe it's also more cost efficient. Maybe they were able to get down the cost and the components of this new system uh, so they so it doesn't cost them as much and they're not losing as much money because like maybe selling it for two hundred they're just losing too much money on it. But yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see what the PS5 Pro comes in uh, next year. I'm I'm thinking it's six hundred at least. And then then you now you know why Xbox wouldn't be doing one and why they're just gonna ride out the gen with a Series X and S refresh with for the same price. So. Uh, Parker Petrov says, Hey, Jez and Rand, I was wondering in regards to Ubisoft streaming rights of ABK games. If ABK is making a new game like, example, Blizzard's survival game, does ABK have to make a cloud version of the game, or would it be Ubisoft's choice as to if they fund a cloud version? As couldn't Microsoft just argue PC and console versions were made, but the cloud no cloud version was intended, so additional work would need to be done to optimize the game for cloud. If that work is to be done, it is the choice of the streaming rights holder. Well... We don't know some of the minutia of this deal, but I presume that most of the cloud gaming versions are PC at their base. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would think that there's no there's no stipulation that says Xbox has to make a specific version if it was never planned. You know, I think it's just like a case of like, is this available? Um, what ever any the 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 version that you guys have made is available to us to distribute i think i would think that's where we're at with that stuff could be wrong but i don't think there's going to be any forced stipulated version creation that microsoft has to invest in i don't think that's the case that would be a weird deal to agree to um, but I don't know for sure. I mean, I, I do think like there will be a streaming version of Odyssey, and it will be on Ubisoft's platform. The question is like, is it you know what version is it? I mean, if you're if you're Ubisoft and you have all these things, you're gonna want to leverage it, right? Mm. Um, I don't know. We'll 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 see how that all plays out. Uh, Lee Sanders says, "Afternoon, gents. So I've been thinking about the Activision and COD machine. What do you think is the best way for with it?" I was toying with the idea of a new studio being created, like how the Coalition and 343 were started, perhaps moving people from studio to just work on COD, allowing the three studios sharing custody of the franchise to do something else other than COD. What would you guys like to see happen? Personally, what I would like to see happen is they allow them to go biannual so the teams have more time to work on COD, and with that more time, it allows other teams within those 
studios mm-hmm. to work on other games as well. Because if you start out, for example, Treyarch in 2024, and Treyarch's putting out their COD game, and then 2026's Sledge, and 2026's uh, would be Infinity Ward, and then 2028 would be Sledgehammer, and then 2030 would be Treyarch again. You essentially have six years in between, right? Because you're skipping every other year in between, which that prov- could provide with a, a, hi- a higher quality Call of Duty at also the same time also letting them and probably the other support studios make other things if, you know, they could, it, it, you know, because they would have the time to essentially. With them locked to yearly, you probably don't get that maneuverability. And I think the game's quality suffer for it, quite frankly, because you're always... It's always like, hey, we got, we got, we, this game's got to be next year. It's got to be next year. We got to be next year. And we've seen AAA games take way longer than three years to make. And we've seen COD suffer for it. So what I want from COD is they go biannual because it's just best for the developers and best for the quality of the games. And with that, they even start allowing, letting them work on other games in the meantime as well. But who knows if that's what's, that's what happens. Yeah, I feel the same. Uh, we have stay high FFF in the super chat. Are we ever going to get a competitor to NBA 2K? Probably not. That's too entrenched at this point. I mean, we don't even really have a real competitor to Madden. I mean, 2K's tried, but they're not even really allowed to make a simulation stuff. It's just, I don't think we'll see it. Because to make a competitor to NBA 2K, you got to get the license. Got to get the players. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. <clears throat> Hmm. An achievement says they can lease out the banjo IP to a studio that wants to do it. Let them take the potential hit, but if it's success, they can acquire the studio. Yeah, but they could have been doing that already. Like the, it hasn't happened yet for, you know, for reasons. Maybe no, they didn't like the pitch. No, maybe nobody's come and actually pitched them. Um, just because you know you guys want a banjo doesn't mean any the developer out there wants to make a banjo. You know. It doesn't mean Microsoft wants to license a banjo. Yeah, or that. So, I don't know. We'll. we'll I mean, are much personally, more I want I, I want a banjo game to be made just so the banjo burrows can be quiet for a change and just <laughs> just go enjoy go enjoy the banjo game and be like, we finally got it. And you know, then Microsoft, then they can be like, well, it only sold fifty copies. Well, it's like, yeah, because nobody really cares. <laughs> but I think that's uh Rand is really harsh. I mean, I'm actually. sorry. Doovy says NBA Live was it. Yeah, NBA Live was the competitor to 2K, but it, the sales disparity between the two were pretty outrageous and they stopped making it because it wasn't worth it anymore and 2K just won, you know? And they didn't win like Madden won. Like Madden, they bought the license and nobody else could use it. NBA is like you can license it. It's just NBA Live was trash in comparison to 2K. That was it. They 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 won that out. Really? Anyways, um, that's the end of the show. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Another another Xbox Two in the books. Another four hour episode. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button for us. Subscribe if you're new. This will be up up on audio platforms tomorrow make sure to give us a review there you know give us five stars if you like the show zero stars if you think you know rand's a whiny immature little man like that one person said (laughs) (laughs) and um yeah with that we'll be back next week for another episode uh you know we'll we're working on on the guests for next month let's see how that all pans out but i think we're we're gonna try to do two for xbox two plus one next month yes and uh yeah so with that said i hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the weekend make sure to use code xb2 at manscaped.com to get your 20 percent off um because they sponsored the episode so yeah have a have a wonderful weekend guys and keep it gaming later take care everybody rock and roll